I tell them I'm going live. Okay. I'm over this. Am I live? No. Yeah, it's right on there. Well, you're on. Oh, I'm on? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I don't know why I didn't do the countdown. It, I, you told me it was going to do the countdown. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. That was very unprofessional of me. Hello. Um, welcome in. I have not done this since December, so my bad. And usually Richard, Nick, or Sam are doing the technical things, but today I am. Um, so hence the rough start. So welcome in. I'm Donna. Welcome to Dinners with Donna. Today is a very special day because we are having a cooking stream takeover with my very good friends, Pepper Tree Villa, also known as PTV. Um, they're on the West Coast, and they're going to be showing you some amazing Disneyland classic recipes today, and I'm going to bring them in in just a minute. Um, but I first want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank all of my members, my channel members. I love you. You stuck by me. You support me. Um, it means the world to me. Thank you so much. All of my moderators, I can't do this without your help. So thank you so much for volunteering your time. I know time is precious. And for you to be here with me means the world. So thank you so much. And I uh, also wanted to thank all of you. While I've been sick with my um, foot injury, because I had foot surgery back in January, um, I wanted to thank everybody who sent messages and cards and flowers and gifts. You guys were amazing. Uh, I just want to show you, this is a basket of all the cards you guys have sent me over the last few months. There's so many to go through. Um, I won't bore you with going the, through them on stream, but I just wanted to let you know that I got them and I appreciate each and every single one of them. You guys are amazing. Um, the support and love I felt throughout my healing process and I'm getting there. Um, I should be cooking within the next few weeks for you guys. So I should be back hopefully. So keep your fingers crossed, but PTV is going to take really good care of you today, but I'm just going to do a quick chat check here. Let's see. We'll scroll back to the top and I'll say hello because I've missed all of you so much. Oh my goodness. It's so great to be back with you. Well, the first one, PTV. Hi, PTV. <laughs> we'll see you in a minute. Rob Fuzz. Hi, Rob. Joe Cuthbert or Cuthbert. I'm not sure how to say that. She says, hey, not going to be live in the UK until 9 p.m. May not make the live stream. I'm working in the morning. But big hello, Donna. Welcome back. We'll catch up on uh, later. So great to see you. Well, thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. I know it's late in the UK. So any of my UK viewers who are here, Thank you so much. And I totally understand that you may have things to do and you may have to get up early in the morning. So no worries. You can always watch the replay. That's the good thing. Oh, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. I hope you're getting your Ninja Creamy today. And then we have Jan. Hi, Jan. She just sent me a beautiful card. Um, oh, Arjans. Hello. <laughs> Um, oh, Richard, the Orlando. Go. Hi, Richard. Welcome in. We're going to miss you today. He was going to cause some shenanigans, but we I guess, decided not to. Hi, Christine Hickman and Sarah Binkwitz and Trisha Thayer and CH. Hi, CH. James Gerhardt. This is the first time I can see the chat, you guys. I'm usually on the other side of the computer, so this is really cool. Um, Marilyn Barkowitz, thank you so much for being here. Hello. Um, let's see, Teresa Squara. Hello. Noelle Ash, I hope you're doing well. And did I get everybody? Let's scroll, 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 scroll down. Oh, Michelle the Quilter. Hi, Michelle. And we have Max. Hi, Max. Welcome in. Good to see you. Sean Rogers. Hi, Sean and Tasha. Um, let's see, Stacy, Stacy from Living the Magic, yay, welcome in. Um, let's see, did I get everyone? I think Garrett was in here for Monarch Moments. Hi, Garrett, Michelle, and Gabe, and Hannah, and wow, there's a lot of chat in here. You have to do this every time I go live? Okay, no wonder why we <laughs> miss people. Hi, Nicole, happy taunt. Okay. Did I get everybody? I'm getting to the bottom. I'm nearing the bottom. I'm nearing the bottom. Bear with me, guys. You guys rock. Francisco, hello. Welcome in. 
There's Garrett. Okay, I knew I saw him somewhere. And Diana Murphy, welcome in. And let's see, did I get everybody? Oh, the chat jumped. Oh, dear. Does it jump on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Jennifer Piccolo. Hi, Jen. And it's Joey's World. Hi, Lisa, Keith, and Joey. So good to see you. Thank you for being here. No oh, Cherie, Surfer Girl. Hello. Welcome welcome in. I am Mikey Wheeler. Hi, Mikey. Thank you. Okay, I'm getting there. I'm down to Tiki Man Fan. See, I ha I'm, I'm at my pace. I'm sorry, guys. Hi, Tiki Man Fan. Welcome in. Victoria Ward. Hello. Jill Dufour. Hello. And Tasha, hello again. Uh, let's see. Oh, and Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Welcome in. Tommy from Living the Magic. Okay. Elizabeth H. Hello. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. I don't want to miss anybody because I, I would feel just horrible. Julie. Hi, Julie. Welcome in. Denise. Dennis. Hello. Always good to see you. D&G, yay. I'm so glad you're here, Derek and Gregory. You guys rock. Um, let's see. Anyone else? Oh, Paul Engel. Hi, Paul. And Marguerite. Hi, Marguerite. It's wonderful to see you. Um, do, 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 do. um Judy. Oh, it's always good to see you, Judy. Thank you for being here. Oh, and Jeffrey Pop. Hi. It's wonderful to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Hi, Roxanne Simpson and Cindy and Stephanie Danielle and Vicki Gillespie. Hello. And did it do? Nathaniel. Hi, Nathaniel. It was so great to see you the other night. It was so much fun. Noah. Noah, so good to see you. Deborah Doodles, welcome in. And Yvonne, Yvonne G, hello. Thank you for being here. And Paul, hi, Paul. And I think I've gotten everybody. And if I didn't, tag me or tag Richard or tag Sam because I, I will say hello. <laughs> okay, so without further ado, I am going to bring in my amazing friends um, from Pepper Tree Villa. They go live every Monday night at 930, and they have such a well-produced, amazing show. It's drama-free, stress-free, full of fun. They, they actually show us crafts, cooking. They make cocktails. They review Hallmark movies. They're just so fun. What a wonderful family they are. But without further ado, I'm going to bring in... Arnie, Ben, and Doug, and um, we're going to show you how to make some Disneyland classics. So here we go. Hi, guys. Hey, everyone. Hello. Hi. Oh, I love your apron, Doug. Yes. You're so festive. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we're very tiki. Huge fans of the tiki room, yeah. so we're going to explain a lot of that, too. But Wonderful. Yeah, but I'm Doug. I'm Arnie. And I'm Ben. And we are Pepper Tree Villa. Yeah. So uh, how do you want to go about doing this, Donna? Yeah, do we want to jump right in? Do you have any questions? So do you want to go, do you want to like just give an overview of what you'll be making and then I'll throw it over to you guys so you can start? Okay, yeah, sure. You can go ahead and take it. Okay, well, we're, we're starting with, um, well, you're probably going to start with the chili, right? Yeah, so what we're doing, we're taking Disneyland classic Walt, when Walt was alive recipes, that when he was working at the studios or even when he was eating at Disneyland. And these are authentic recipes. We're going to go over a book and we're going to tell you stories and you know what we know. But we're going to make Walt's chili that is at the Carnation Cafe. And we'll tell you there's different versions of his chili, but we'll explain that. We're going to do what's called uh, uh, the tea, tea cakes. The tea lounge tea cakes. Tea mm -hmm. lounge. And we'll tea, explain. Yeah, what, we'll explain when we get there. The tea, what the late tea lounge is. We're going to make a Tahitian Terrace. Now, Tahitian Terrace was. Tahitian Terrace Punch. Punch, yeah. which was part of the an old Disneyland thing, very Walt. And we're going to make the punch. We can add, tell you how you can add uh, some adult libations to that. To go to the, uh, with the chili, we're also going to be making a sweet potato rosemary biscuit. Yeah. Oh, so those are, those are from the Blue Bayou. So these are very, you know, with Central Disneyland yeah. and very Wonderful. fun. So we're doing Walt's chili. Now Walt's chili. Ahead, okay. yeah, now I'm just going to interject just for one minute. I just want to say welcome in. Um, Disney Freak, Mike88NYC, Ben PTV, 
And did I get everybody? Janie B, welcome in. And I think I got everybody. I hope. Okay, I'm going to present you, Doug, so you can um, yeah. go for it. Do you want to? Am, am, am I right here? Am I right here? There you go. Go jump where you want, Doug. You're right there on camera. Okay. Oh, and um, Margie Linney just sent a $10 super chat that says, hi, Donna, miss you. So glad to see you again. Well, Margie, thank you so much. And if you had typed hello in the chat, I'm so sorry if I missed you, but welcome in. And I'm so glad that you're here. And hello, Cynthia. Welcome in. Candy Mama's here, Doug. Oh, wow. I get <laughs> harassed. I think I'm going to use my shift knife. Okay. Great. And not my Sanduco. And you want to take your, your camera over and uh, get a, a good down view for, for Doug? So we're doing Welch chili. Now I've made this before and the one that they use, it needs to simmer for three hours on low. And I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. And now that the world and almost every household who is a cook in America has an instant pot. It's almost ubiquitous to the world of kitchens. Everybody's kitchen now, like a microwave and a coffee pot. So I'm, we did this in the, um, Barney uh, Ben's uh, doing something. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Just keep you going. can okay. So this has this is like I said this is the Carnation Cafe at Disneyland on Main Street, and we'll eat there a lot. And there's some cool stories behind that. Oh, but absolutely. it has stew meat that I'm going to chop up look really fine, three quarters, and I also have ground beef or ground meat, ground <laughs> hamburger. So Dougism. Oh God. Dougism. So what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to start with the meat, but I'm going to mise en place. Mise en place is where I'm getting all my stuff all chopped up and ready so everything perpetually gets dumped. Okay, I'm just going to interject real quick and say a quick hello to Glenn Marchant. Hello, Glenn and Vera. And hi, Suzanne. Oh. Welcome in. And thank you, Dennis, for becoming a channel member. I really appreciate that. So I'm going to start chopping up. It has an onion. They say a small onion. And I like peel the extra yeah. layer of it. Because I don't like that little leathery, the thin one. It gets thin on the edge and then it gets thicker on it. I just pitch the whole edge. I mean. No, that's so weird. This, this message didn't show up on my end, but it showed up for Richard. So I'm going to read it. Mikey, thank you so much. He has been a channel member for 16 months. And he said, can we hear the Epic Donna's PTV song? LOL, love that you're back. <laughs> um, <laughs> and hi, BDF. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do you guys really want to hear that? <laughs> Absolutely, Donna. Okay. Well, here we go. I'll give you some mise en place music. How's that, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pepper Tree Villa. Pepper Tree Villa. A pepper, a tree, and a villa make three. Pepper tree villa. Pepper tree villa. There you go. <laughs> that was not my best performance at all, but I, I love you guys so much. That was me on the fly. <laughs> Hi, AAA Sparkles. Welcome in. So now I have to ask Doug, what size is your Instant Pot? Well, I have both the eight quart and mm -hmm. this one is the six quart. Everybody okay. pretty much buys the six quart. This mm -hmm. is one of their umpteen million models. Now, if they had an eight quart, would they need to adjust the time? No. Okay, it perfect. Does not. This was one of those. But you realize, I ended up realizing that, wow, I needed both sizes. So, but I have a thing for small kitchen appliances anyway, so... I'm Wonderful. Right. You'll see camera that's light there on the clock, but that's because we also want to show you a down shot of how Doug is making these, but also so we want to show you what it looks like from the front. Hi, Leanne Blackmore. Welcome in. And Menu Rager, hello. We have lots of friends with us today. This is wonderful. I'm so glad you're here. So how's the camera looking? Is everything looking okay, Donna? It looks beautiful for me. Oh. It's nice and clear. I can hear you guys perfectly. It's wonderful. Great. I just wanted to make sure that was the case. Yep, absolutely. So Doug is making Walt's chili. Now, there is a few stories about Walt <laughs> in this case. 
he was a man of simple taste. So uh, there's this one story that uh, we read in the book. Here, let me show you this book. Um, it's, and I'll, um, I'll focus the camera on me. There's a little light behind me, but you can still see me. So, uh, all right. So here we have a book that we got at Disneyland. Doug and I were at Disneyland in 2017. And uh, we happened to be there the day that she was signing the, the author, whose name is uh, Marcy Character Smothers. She dedicated the book to the two of us, uh, Disneyland, November 11th, 2017, and said, Eat Like Walt. Now, this book is full of stories about Walt Disney and uh, his, I guess, desires for different foods. He believed that the food at Disneyland should be the best of the best and wanted also simple and approachable. So in, in his case, chili was one of his favorite foods. Uh, there is a story in the book that talks about the fact that he also liked cheeseburgers and Milk shakes steaks. and other things. There's this one story we absolutely loved. <laughs> Walt, for when he was preparing for the 1964 World's Fair, was approaching various people for sponsorships and saying, hey, we're going to be doing all these attractions. We need money. We need funding for the fair. And would you, are you interested? So he went to Westinghouse in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And for lunch, he ate in there. I guess it was their company dining room that they had for executives. They served lobster salad, which, you know, in 1964, that was a rather extravagant meal very, very for mm -hmm. a board meet room. Walt finished with that particular meal, and he left after talking to the big heads at Westinghouse. And, and when he was done, he talked to the people in his group, and he says, you know what? That lunch wasn't really very good. Let's go get cheeseburgers and chocolate shakes. <laughs> so that that was Walt. He he was very had very simple tastes. Uh, I have a question. Is that book available online? I believe I, it is. I don't know for a fact, but uh, that's what the name is. Eat like Walt. Wonderful. Out, I'm, I'm almost right now. I'm almost sure it is. But the we talked to the wall. We were there for quite a while. We were really there for quite a while talking to Marcy. And she said that she got access to stuff that even people from D23 didn't get access of. From wow. The studios. And she got to hold real copies of a lot of different menus and uh, hear first-time stories and uh, copies of recipes. That's so amazing. She said there's some stuff. And then when she was making some of the recipes, she goes, oh, gosh. I was even gagging when I was seeing some of the recipes because <laughs> the food back in the 50s and 60s was, um, I'm obsessed with that time with food. But right. she says, oh God, I wouldn't even eat that stuff now. Oh, wow. And she she was just a who. And I mean, she was just a doll to explain some of the stuff that how she had so much fun. Now, Doug, what are you doing there? Okay. Here in California, we love garlic. Now, garlic yeah. comes in a, a jar. I think the garlic that comes in the jar makes me gag. I don't like it. So I use fresh garlic for absolutely everything. I try to use the jar stuff to be fast and cute. It, it just does not work for me because yeah. it's very acidic or something is wrong when they you buy it. But I think it oxidizes in the jar because once it's peeled, I think it's compromised. It does. And they put citric yeah. acid to preserve it. And I mean... Mm -hmm. It's used a lot, and I'm not begrudging anybody. Please use fast things. Please use whatever is to you. But to me, it's like garlic is one of those things. It's a flavor enhancer and a profile that cannot be beat. So yeah. we went to the Gilroy Garlic Festival, and I probably you probably heard it throughout the nation about our Gilroy Garlic Festival. But we went there, and we went to one of the little booths. And this guy had this uh, grater that was handmade, from it was made like ceramic or clay, and then he had this tube. I don't know if you guys can see the tube. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, we can. And there it's you know. like a rubbery little tube. So what I do is anybody. Can it looks like my physical therapy device. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, you're like, oh, look at this. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Yes. Right here. Yeah. You just kind of roll it. You probably roll it, and peeling garlic, and everybody knows, is a real pain. Mm -hmm. And all you do is just kind of like roll back and forth. And look at that. The peel, well, in the perfect world, it rubs itself. <laughs> and I'm lying. 
Well, this is on a, okay, there, see the peel just peels right off. Yeah, there you go. So, and garlic peels are. And just really quickly, I want to say hi, Mom Resort TV One, welcome in. Um, Neil, Alyssa Neil, welcome in. ALJ, um, Poppy Poppy, did I miss anybody? Uh, we had a bunch of people come in. I said ALJ, Ragnar, Ragnar, welcome in. So wonderful to see you. Okay, I think we've got everybody now. Sorry, Doug. Yeah, no, that, you please. You know, hey, viewers are. This, this is need, your show. This though, is your right? show, this and you. visitors need attention. So, um, a lot of chefs do this. Uh, I'm like, okay, whatever. It does work. If I just need one, I'm not going to get the peel out. Right. Does peel <laughs> now, out. I have a question again. So. I've, I've not tried this, but I saw this on the Martha Stewart video while I was recovering and I've been dying to try it. She took two bowls and put her garlic in there and then shook it. And then all of it came out peeled. Um, I've seen that on TikTok and Instagram and everything. I've never tried it. I've never tried it. And I feel like in some shape or form that could work, but not. I, I have tried it myself. Uh, I just half and half. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, I, I kind like, of figured. I, I, you know, I think you, we did do it. You're absolutely correct. We did do it, and I thought it was, it does not work. Okay. I That's think it's good to know. I just feel if you Hi, peel Amy. it, see, I'm peeling it and rubbing oh. it, and it just peels right Megan. Off. Hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. Megan, Megan is, by the way, Megan is our niece. So, uh, we love Megan. Yeah. Okay. So, I think these are, I call big cloves of garlic. So, I'm going to. Did they show, come from Gilroy? Can you show that camera right there? Yeah, there we go. Okay. These are, I, they say four this cloves of garlic. garlic. Yes, this garlic is from Gilroy. Wow. That's the, like garlic capital, guys. If you didn't yeah. know that, they have a huge garlic festival every year. It's amazing. Well, unfortunately, with, um, with circumstances that is, uh, we've been here. Uh, because of a little incident that happened in 2019, it hit all the world. There was right. an unfortunate incident. They cannot, and then the pandemic of the past two years, they have opted to stop it completely. <gasps> they're not bringing it back? No. As of right oh. now, no, they're not. But they're trying to talk to someone to possibly bring it back. But the people that were in no. charge say that they just cancel it altogether. They don't want it. It's Oh, that's sad. It's it it's one of those things, and it really boils down to money. And security. Um, yeah. and, and the security, because of that little incident, the insurance is, it, it, they can't do it. It literally yeah. cannot so, do it. By so. the way, Doug also has a lot of the uh, remains that are there that he's, that he's got. This is our little composting bin. Oh, yeah. We have started composting. It's yes, awesome. that's awesome. I love that. And we're going to be gardening. So I have made a humongous mess. And it's like. Hi, oh. classy Disney mom. Welcome in. Oh, and uh, Dad Resort TV one. Welcome in, Jerry. Woohoo. So we've got the garlic ready. Hi, John Sirkbum. Welcome in. We have so many wonderful friends with us. Thank you all for being here. I'm so happy that you've joined us. Okay. Yeah. Oh, just have to rinse everything. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Maybe so, about if, we keep, if you don't like garlic, I don't think we can be friends. I <laughs> will. Okay. She can be sassy sometimes. Yeah. But that's our niece. Yeah. <laughs> Megan loves garlic. And again, it's, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. It really does. So I've peeled a lot of it watched a lot of tiktoks that you didn't know but i've seen it done this way i've done it this way i saw it on um i think it was america's test kitchen or Cook's yeah Country, one of those and um yeah it works well i think yeah it's like you just kind of go down the ribs mm -hmm. of it and then you don't get as many seeds spilling everywhere either yeah i mean it's just like you do it i you know kind of mm -hmm. You know, everybody has their thing doing potato, uh, 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 bell pepper, bell pepper. <laughs> but you kind of get in, <laughs> you gotta get rid of that membrane, and it's like, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, you don't want to eat the white part of the pepper, guys. It's it's not a good taste. It's not. 
And this gets chopped up and it. Megan, just... Doug is making um, Walt's chili and beans in the Instant Pot. Yeah, there's the recipe in case anyone's interested. That yes. is the recipe. And the recipes are available in Donna's Facebook group. Yes. So, so if you haven't joined, the links are in the description. Also, the recipes are in the description with, for everything except the tea cakes, because unfortunately, YouTube, when we're setting up our videos, there's a 5,000 character limit and it ran over. So I had to uh, sacrifice the tea cake recipe. <laughs> <laughs> but that tea cake recipe is available in the Facebook group. It is indeed. So uh, Donna, what is your face? The name of your Facebook group is Dinners with Donna. Oh, the link. The link to the Facebook group is in um, the video description, I believe. Oh no, I didn't. I wasn't able to fit mine in. That's right. I'll go. I'll go pop it in. <laughs> I'll pop in my links. <laughs> Thanks, huh. Ernie. You bet. Oh, Candy Mom, thank you so much. Uh, this stream is making me so happy. Love it. She's been a channel member for 19 months. Cynthia, you're amazing. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate well, you. Oh, gosh. I'm just getting all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and no, we don't have a dog or anything. And, you know, back in when we were young, we had when, when anything dropped on the floor, you yell at your dog. And it comes in and eats everything off the floor. Yeah, That's what I miss most about having a dog. Yeah, we just said, Sheba, come here. And she yelled excited. She was picky. And we were the we were the only one, if you could believe it. You're not supposed to feed dogs chocolate. That's all right. we gave that to our dog was chocolate. Really? <laughs> yep. We gave her, we called him Sheba Candy. We had a shit suit. And Sheba candy is these the whoppers, the little round balls that are melt, uh, malted wafer, and they're in a little milk chocolate ball. So we would give her um, a whopper candy, and yeah. we called them Sheba candy, and she ate them. So they're saying that chocolate's not good, and I'm like, well, you know, she lasted 15 years, so I'm not trying to say it's a big fat lie, but uh, huh. yeah, go figure. I know, because they, they, I mean, the vets have always said, never do it. But I mean, it, obviously, the dog lived a, a long life. So I mean, <laughs> maybe a little bit is, is okay. I don't know. I mean, we didn't give her a lot, but, you know, right. we gave her, you know, one candy. So well, maybe I mean, it goes into the moderation, you know, everything in moderation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now, if you have any questions about what we're doing or anything else about us, whatever, just feel free to bring it up in the chat and we'll answer yeah. your questions as we can. So hi busy trash can, welcome in. Doug, once you're Catherine done. Catherine Lugo, thank you for being here. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Arnie. No, that's okay. Once you're done chopping the bell pepper, you've got the garlic, you've got the onion. Then what happens? Well, I gotta do the meats and once I chop up the the hamburger meat. We see um, there are people here that are saying that chocolate milk chocolate is not all that bad for dogs. It's dark chocolate. That's really ah, bad. okay. Yeah, I mean Hi, that's Essex. is there a reason why my eyes are watering? <laughs> it's probably <laughs> the fresh onion. And, so I have the uh peppers and onions in this one, and then now I'm going to are you hungry, Richard? I'm this comment in the stream was the thing I don't like about this stream is that I don't get to eat the food. <laughs> Megan loves the handle Disney Flash. Yeah, we love that screen name too. <laughs> well, that's true. You don't have to do ditches, Richard, and you're not doing tech either. I'm pretty much doing it. So you got the day off. Hi, John Avery. Welcome in. Aha. Got all the I'm not here? running. And doing the problem I had the other time, I was like, oh, "Stacy, you're funny." And no leftovers for the Jackleys. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do with garlic? You know, garlic has a nice shelf life. Do not put it in the refrigerator. But I cut my garlic in half, and if you see right here, there's a membrane that's super bitter, and if it turns green, that means wait, we can't starting, see it, Doug. That means it's starting to sprout. This green like line in the center. Oh, of there it, we go. You chop it in half, 
Uh -huh. You start seeing any bit of this green, that means it's starting to sprout. That makes garlic super, super bitter. So what I do is I just kind of like peel it out. Oh, nice. Like you, like you would with like with an onion. Yeah. Just, and then you just have a, you just take out the well. I don't like that green. Don't, Fresh garlic doesn't have that problem. Don't you do that with eyes on potatoes too? You can do that. See how it just pops right out. Can you guys see that? The green it's just. It's a little blurry, but yeah, we can see that there. All right, right here. Mm -hmm. I just popped the little membrane out. There we go. So I just check it. If it's fresh, generally it doesn't, but even fresh garlic, we don't, we might think it's fresh, but it was mm -hmm. probably picked so long ago. See how it's kind of yeah. greenish. So now, Doug, how would you recommend storing your garlic and how long does it last by not keeping it in the refrigerator? Well, garlic is like a root vegetable or a root thing. Mm -hmm. it can, um, all that stuff has like a sugar enzyme. So when sugar gets at a certain temperature, uh, it starts breaking down really fast. Right. And uh, you want to keep it at room temperature in a cool, dark, dry place. Well, you know, not a lot of places are cool and dry. Uh, just keep it off to the side away from light or heat. I just keep it on the countertop. Okay. Well, you can also so what about it? the humidity. Like we live in a very humid place. Would that affect it? Yeah. Cause it can actually get moldy if you don't. Right. That's dry. why I keep mine in the fridge. That's why I was asking. Cause I was like, yeah. Ooh, I keep mine in the fridge. Yeah. Because <laughs> with a very humid environment, you, you mm -hmm. need to have air. So right. that's why Absolutely. You have to work in your environment. And yes. we have a butter bell, a butter bell. We oh, like yes. Those room, are great. room temperature, real salted butter. Mm -hmm. And we don't use it during the summer because our house, unfortunately, stays a little bit more warm than we wanted. But right. we also don't work in a very humid environment because the butter gets such at room temperature, it slides out of its contraption. So when you pull it out, it, the water, because it's like a suction, it pulls it out and they, the mass of butter is in the pool of water. So oh, wow. that's why a lot of human pla humid places, especially during the summer, doesn't um, use a butter bell and keep the, because of the warm temperature and humidity is absolutely horrible. And speaking of yeah. humidity and temperature, I watched a lot of food channels on food, any other competition. They always had food competition in Celebration, Florida. <laughs> and I'm like, why? You have people from all over the world. I know. That's and they're crazy. used to doing it. They don't know how to cook in humidity. And I just want to say that Megan made a comment. Um, she said, I mean, you store garlic by eating it, right? Well, <laughs> that is true. I think that's a very valid point, Megan. And hello, Carlos and Patricia. And did I miss anyone? I think I might have missed someone else. You know, um, we go through garlic so quickly here that it rarely has time to go bad. Yeah, that's same here. I use it all the time. Yeah, but you have to find out what spoils, what doesn't, what you can keep out, what you can't. And, you know, it's a whole temperature how it, where you live. So I'm keeping this. Is, I know this is not what you should be doing or you should use a bowl, but I don't like dirty dishes. This is my garlic. This is four cloves. This is a lot, but I like I handed garlic. I'll put that off the side. Now I'm going to get my meat. So I'm using stew meat. I like to use both. Some people just use ground hamburger. Mm -hmm. And it's three quarters of a pound. So I'm Now I will tell you, Doug, I do the same thing. I use both yes. in my chili. Stewing yep. beef and ground beef? Yes. Yeah. It makes my sense. mind is being blown right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was it's roughly half the package we have. I that know. package is one and a half pounds, so we're only going to use about half the half the package. Yeah, this. and I'm gonna trim like that. Is trim. yeah, you always have to go through your stew meat, don't you, and and trim Look the excess. That. That is, that's the yeah, that's a big chunk oh. of fat. And then sometimes the the pieces of meat themselves are too big. No, you these are gonna get down. really whacked down, and uh, they're gonna be small dice. You want, yeah, yeah, you want it to be small dice. You don't want a huge chunk of this compared to everything else that's in the chili. Right, and when you have bigger pieces like that, it's you want your meat to be the same size so it cooks evenly. Right, exactly. You want that is the one thing you want everything pretty much at the same temperature and at the mm -hmm. same size. 
Yes. So that will that goes with baking and cooking. It just makes life so much easier. So I agree. For those of you that have just recently joined, we are cooking waltz chili and beans. That's yes. done there at the counter. Uh, doing a little chopping right now. That's the recipe we're using. This comes from the Carnation Cafe at Disneyland, which has a short has a small story to it, something that we just recently experienced. Do you care to talk about that one, Doug? Diet Coke pants? Yes, Diet Coke pants. <laughs> uh, we've had the pleasure and we're so blessed to hang out and be with the Orlando guy from Orlando, Florida, Richard Howard. And we met and celebrated New Year's Eve. And he arrives, we arrive, we meet. You know, it's one of the things you kind of meet your you know, you're kind of your friends. And we had such a good time. Well, we, we our first day in Disneyland was uh, Thursday. And it was actually raining. It was the only day it rained. Well, yeah. we were not exactly prepared because California rain is a lot different than Florida rain. Yeah, and and he even said last, that. The it's last like, time it rained in California was like seven years ago. How do I do that? So, <laughs> we're there. So he's like, guys, I got to get you guys ponchos. I'm wearing mm -hmm. my... Oh, netted okay. new balance tissues tennis shoes they got wet you know you just know better and you don't even though we've been to disneyland hundreds and hundreds of times you should know better well we still didn't get our room our suite again thank you richard so much you are just a amazing yeah richard amazing. just made a call we love richard he's so nice he he is. Was, this was not my shining moment oh no story. it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't so we're like, let's get eat. We're not back to where we don't get our suite yet. Let's let's grab some, you know. And we we didn't prepare anything. We're just we're guys that are on the fly. What's open? Let's eat. No mobile order. Let's go with the wind to our back. So we ended up at the Carnation Cafe on Main Street. I like the restaurant. We looked at it itself. The the gal says, "Oh, it'll be about twenty minutes wait," which we were like on two days before New Year's. You're like, what? Twenty minute wait? We'll put our name in. Very rare because now you have to plan your Disney trip to when you even have to go to the bathroom. So <laughs> we're like Carnation Cafe. The food looks great. Ben wanted the chili because that's the only place where they actually have chili. So we're on, you know, we finally get in. We get a booth. We get a corner booth that kind of goes like a U. And it's Ben, Arnie, me, and Richard's on the end. And we get settled and we're in the coat and we're already pretty much all drenched. Well, our drinks come. The drinks get delivered. And right when the guy delivers my Coke, Richard already had his Diet Coke. The guy, Richard wanted to get it out of the way to pull uh -oh. his, but, the, it, got, but it got into the way of the, wait, the waiter. He tipped over and Diet Coke went all over me. <gasps> oh, I had a like, whole. Diet Coke, cold ice Diet Coke. I'm sitting there freaking. <laughs> Richard, <laughs> Richard went purple, and red, <laughs> then pink. He was mortified. <laughs> and I'm like, cold, very cold, wet Diet Coke everywhere. Did the Diet Coke get spilled on the pants I just given you? Yes, Christmas? you. We went pant shopping at Macy's just <laughs> after Christmas. And I'm like, these are really great. And I only wear Levi's because, you know, not to say I'm a snob. These are really great Levi's. And I wanted to wear them more than once. Well, that didn't happen. So they were Diet Coke, very cold Diet Coke. And uh, he's just like, this is not happening to me. You guys, you know, if you want to cancel the trip or I will call Delta and see if we you know, bail. Tiki Man fan made a, a great point here. Says, You're lucky it was diet because they're really scary. Oh, oh that would have been imagine the ants, Doug. Oh no. Oh, I already knew about that. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, it just it seeped everywhere. And the waiter was mortified. He brought these really absorbent, they have actually really good napkins there. And I'm like. <laughs> I am swabbing, and then the side of me on the booth was just mound of napkins that I was trying to swab up the diet. <laughs> we had incredible food. Ben bought the chili or ate the chili. We had the patty milk with their secret sauce. It came with a cornbread muffin, too, that was delicious. Oh, my God. It was just insane. And then I had the Green Goddess grilled chicken salad. Oh, I'm trying to mimic Oh, yum. It's um, Megan said that now, Richard, yeah, um, this has immortalized you in my book. So, <laughs> yep. 
I mean, it was just, if it was one thing, it was a comic relief because we never met, and one thing just is going but on. But that meal other. was just out mind blowingly good. Yeah, yeah Richard, that was. Richard, Richard commented here that the food was scrumptious, and he is not wrong. No, I it was return phenomenal. To Carnation, uh, Carnation Cafe anytime. There's nothing yeah. bad on that menu. Now, there is one quick thing about that restaurant. That is uh, the worker Oscar that used to be there. Oh. Oscar was one of the longest running cast members at Disneyland and wow. he cooked at Carnation Cafe. He died in 19 or 20. He just passed he away. He just passed away. Oh, wow. and I have pictures of with him. He would come out and uh, he worked at the Carnation Cafe. He was hired in December of 1956. So a little over a year he says he knows, and he knew Walt, but he never really talked to him. He was just a very shy worker bee. And, but he, he knows Walt. And he worked there up until 27... About 2017. 2016, now, he, I think. He was a very shy person. Uh, and so much so that when it came time for him to move some things around from one, from one restaurant to another in the park, he moved one box at a time. And someone went up to him afterwards and says, why didn't you just use a dolly? And he says, I was too shy to ask for help with that. So the thing is, that he, he worked so hard with whatever he did. And he has one item on the menu called Oscar's potatoes. And he was the only one that knew how to make them perfectly. Yeah. So even now, they're not the same. Well, they're, they're just, it's part of, it's again, it's a historical thing. The Walt Chili Oscars, uh, you know, potatoes. potatoes. People go just to eat it. And he would come out in the morning and he would wait for the guests uh, to arrive and he'd wave to them. And then he would go in the back and start cooking breakfast. Steph, and Steph it's an amazing little tiny restaurant, tiny, 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 and you can eat outside. I mean, Steph, we're talking. Stephanie's asking a question Can you cook yeah. this in a crock pot? Yes, yes. Absolutely. We have formulated this to work in an instant pot, but. If you want to slow cook it in a crock pot, do it for four hours. Three to four, hour. three to four hours, and it will do just fine. You just have to make sure that everything is prepared, ready to go. Throw it in that crock pot, and you're good. I nice. am, uh, this is Megan. It's going to start cursing, and she doesn't curse. I weigh, measure, and scale everything. I'm just I do okay. when I'm baking, but not so much when I'm cooking. I am seriously OCD. I like to know: Is this really? You know, uh, you know, three quarters of a pound. So I say invest into a kitchen scale. Yes, I do I suggest wanna, that too. It's um, good to have. Three quarters of a pound is twelve ounces. Twelve ounces. Holy macaroni! Twelve. It's I. Look at this! Holy cow! I'm so <laughs> impressed with myself. Oh, food, food, my own boring. Arnie, do you have a sound effect for that? So look, literally, I scaled it out. Yay! Where are you guys? See, I can't move it. I'm gonna move this just to scotch. Look, twelve ounces. That is exactly twelve ounces. That's awesome, though. Can you see it? Yep, it's there. I can't believe I measured exact. Megan's calling you out. She says, "Oh, good grief." Um. <laughs> I, I mean, I could have just guessed and said, that's oh, three quarters. I don't need to be, even if it was one more, because this is one thing I don't mind if I had more stew meat. But I just wanted to know. So that is exactly three quarters. Way to go, out. Doug. That's awesome. So I will put the rest of it. This is, I know, because I threw away huge, heavy chunks of fat. But yeah. this is, ain't no uh, three quarters. This is probably more like a half a pound. So I That just put... kills me, though, that they you got charged for those big chunks of fat. How much did those weigh, I wonder? Oh, those little things? Um, they're in the garbage, but I will. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to be That's surprised. That's where they belong. <laughs> okay, I need some applause. The stew meat, the onion, the green bell pepper, dice, okay. the four cloves of garlic minced, and I think I did everything else. I'm going hold to on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What did you do? Uh, hi, Ben. Uh, hi. I, I, I'm, <laughs> here, I'm here for all the novice people in the kitchen. What the heck does mise en place mean? That means everything in its place, pre 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 cutting everything and getting everything prepped so you can throw it in the pot when you need to. I yeah. thought that was just called prep. No, it's French term. <laughs> everything is cooking is mostly by the French. 
So I'm talking me's. I should have already started this. I'm going to put on saute. You guys can't really see this. I'll try. No, they can't. No, no they can't. Mm -hmm. Can they see my yeah. little? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We can see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's just go down to saute however you do your saute. Hit enter, start. I'm warming this up. Don't put your hand in it because it gets very hot. I'll try to remember that. Um, I'm going to use my spurtle. A spurtle is a spurtle. It's a wooden European Swedish kind of thing that gets in here, and I'm going to brown with my spurtle. He had to have those. He ordered them online. He was so excited when they came in. And, uh, I love he, my spurtles. He uses them all the time. Yeah, you, you would know. think you make it, you know. Boom, 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 they but. get into all the little crevices and everything, and I just it's, love them. It's just a weird looking paddle and these are by mm -hmm. mad cook these are by the people see i'm not alone here ian thinks that mise en place is a ballet move thank you <laughs> really. i hate you all well in place means in place so that would not really go with dancing but yeah i could understand it <laughs> <laughs> so i got my olive oil you can use vegetable oil. They say olive oil. I don't think back in the day they used veg uh, olive oil in 1958 and 1961. Walt would have used probably just Chris, uh, probably like Wesson oil. Well, or yeah. like that. the 1961 recipe, because there's two that she got to take pictures of and they're in the book. The 1961 had a half a pound of soot. Suet. Suet, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like... Okay. Suet. Suet. Wait, 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 wait. Suet. Isn't that the stuff that goats and cows eat? Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, it yeah. is. I knew something. It's a fat. <laughs> it's Yay, it's, man. <laughs> you can use Crisco instead. But it's the the suet is is that. So I'm like, I'm not gonna use a half a cup of that. The 1958 Waltz recipe had to use pink beans and you cooked them and soaked them overnight and then Cook those separately, and I'm like, I'm not going to do that either. And that one had only a half a teaspoon of chili powder, and that was it. It does say there, note from the chef, Walt was not heavy on seasoning and flavor. He was very super bland. Yeah. And that's very odd for someone who, again, we all love Walt. He was a heavy, heavy smoker. Yes, he was. Smoke, you do kind of lose a little bit of your taste buds for someone who... Has was a heavy smoker. I thought you would want to have everything higher yeah. in flavor because you're actually starting to lose your taste buds. Yeah. I yeah. mean, what's his soul? And, you know, he's an incredible man, but I found that to be very odd. But I mean, we're talking, there was no flavor in this chili. So we're using the modern Carnation Cafe. So, so how's this? Is the saute ready yet? Well, it says it's on, but I'm like almost getting there. I am going to do a little lube in here. And I just want to give a shout out um, to um, John Surfa. Um, I, I don't see if it's your, oh, it's his daughter. His daughter graduated. So congratulations, John. Oh, oh John. Oh, wonderful. That's great. Can we get a yay, Arnie? We sure can. Is yay. it college or high school? I mean, this is amazing. Is it college or high school, John? Type in the chat. So, you, so you're going to just cook this until it just slightly browns. Yeah, I'm just browning the hamburger and browning this because it's going to go. And you want stew meat to be cooked for actually a while because it needs to tender. Yeah, because it, it, it's tough. It's a tougher cut of meat. Yeah, and I mean, I took out all of it. But I'm like, I'm just going to get it so it gets... A head start. And that's another reason, too, why you want the, the pieces smaller as well, because it'll be easier to chew and um, they'll be more tender. Yeah, right. it it's, cooks evenly and faster. Yeah, you don't want big, if I'm doing big hunks of meats, that's what would go in the Instant Pot for a lot longer and or the Crock Pot. Mm -hmm. Crock Pot, chuck roast or stew meat was meant and created by, I think the stew meat people created the Crock Pot. Because you need something to break down that. and um, But I was going to do this on the stovetop, but I didn't want to simmer it for three hours with the Le Creuset. I'm like, eh. I'll just bring out, everybody has an instant pot. Come on. 
I think it's not kind of, I should have turned it on earlier. And Samantha, you're right. We do want to say Nick is graduating this week from high school. So to all our friends who are high school graduates, I know just our dream son, Zach, is graduating. Our friend Wishing Mouse is graduating. We have lots of graduates this year. So congratulations to all of you. Gosh, I can I can barely remember a high school graduation. That was so <laughs> long ago. Ugh. It's funny, I didn't graduate high school. I left four months early to start college, so I never went to my uh, high school prom or graduation. You didn't miss anything, Donna. Yeah, I know, that's what I've heard. <laughs> no, no, it would be next June or, well, whatever. It would be my 30th high school reunion if I ever wanted to do it. I can't believe I've been out of high school for 30 years. Ugh. Yeah. Getting old and crusty and curmudgeon -y. I mean, I always tell everybody I'm going to be Mr. Fredrickson. I watched Up this morning. You did? I love uh, that movie. We watched, we had a friend over, and we hung, and we said, you know, he's like, what would you guys want to watch? And I'm like, you know, we still haven't watched. Okay. It's I, the Jungle Cruise. I need to give a little sound effect. Well, I haven't it. seen that either. Oh, and oh, hi, Rob Buzz. Welcome in. Yeah. <laughs> you got to give Rob his sound effect. Mind blown. Hi, um, Emily. Thank you so much for being here. You're the best. Yeah, Donna, mind, we love Jungle Cruise. So mind, yeah. Did you love it? Okay, yeah, so I've got to I've gotta watch it. And also make sure all of your attention goes to it. Because okay. I'm we have to actually watch it again because there was so much story and they were cram cramming stuff in. You could have really? watched a lot of the movie and go, what is that about? Um Blown, mine, blown. That's amazing. I'm going to have to watch that for sure. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson is hysterical. I mean, he's just an incredible Hollywood actor. Yes. Uh, he is respected. I think he's, you know, totally hysterical. Um, I like a lot of his movies. So he was actually perfect. Act and then Emily oh, Blunt. That's awesome. Was hey, Julie, welcome in. The chemistry they had, I was spectacular. Disney mom. I have another question, um, Doug. So now you know how, like right now, the the Stumi is giving off a lot of liquid. Do you drain any of that, or do you yeah. leave it in? You'll see what I'm going to be doing. Okay, um, cool. Do that. It's uh, I just lined I've up. I've seen it done both ways, but I wasn't sure what your preference preference was. And hello, Kathy H. Welcome in. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. So Disney mom graduated last month with a master's in healthcare administration. That is a degree that's near and dear to my heart. I work, in, I work in healthcare, so that's great. So yeah, right now it's just swimming in, I call meat sweat. Ugh. Yeah, that's what, that's exactly what it is. It's just kind of nasty. Yeah. I think it's done. So what I'm going to do is it's going to beep, but you can do this is, um, you can ladle it out. Man. You can ladle this out, but um, yeah. everybody needs of gloves. So what I'm going to do is take this and heave ho it. Yeah. I do the same thing with my chili because that stuff is just liquid and it it's doesn't nasty. add anything to the recipe at all. So I just let it absorb and mm -hmm. there's the meat now for the ground beast. <laughs> We, well, just because I think Costco with their fat percentage, yeah, we buy it by like six or seven pounds, whatever they have. We love now. Costco what percentage candy. do you recommend? Because I always just use the 93% uh, lean. Personally, I'm a higher fat kind of when it comes to hamburger. I like the higher fat. Okay. I go either 87, 86. Yeah, now see, I do that when I'm making hamburgers, but when I'm using like for a casserole or chili or something, I always go with the 93. I don't know why. Um, it kind of, I just, I think fat is flavor and it you is. Know, You're a little absolutely goes right. a little long way and you're rendering it out. Um, now, some people season like crazy. I think food right now in this day and age is super salty. Everything yeah. is super salty. Yeah. And we're eating way too much salt. I think natural flavors and, you know, like if you were watching Food Network, they would be already salting this. They would already Oh, I know. It's, it's ridiculous. I, I, I can't. Do your preference, please. I'm not. Yeah. This is mine. I'm not right. saying anything I'm doing is right or wrong. 
but I I will keep this up because I'm going to be adding very salty um, stuff. And uh, I've had some foodies that I hung out in Berkeley. And, you know, they're like, we're the home of Chez Panisses. And we're talking some very picky people. I made a risotto and I made another chicken dish. And they were so impressed that it was just perfectly seasoned. And I'm like, basically only put a little bit at the very end they're like you can actually taste everything everything was not overly seasoned and salty yeah and just i get done and it's like yeah, i've seen a couple of comments here in the chat that people like 80 20 when it comes to yeah i think I, i'm in the minority there i don't know why i've just always done it that way i guess my thinking was you get more meat and less fat in your chili actually no it, it really yeah. isn't um for economically, if you stay in the 80s percentile, anywhere in the 80s, it's actually cheaper. When you start getting really? super, super lean, they use a different type of uh, of the of beef. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's more expensive. It's a lot expensive. You get into the 90s, you know, 94, 96. I'm like, I looked at it, I'm like, what? That's like a lot of money. I just use Costco. Yeah, I think this is 87. Yeah, I always get mine at either Costco or Sam's Club and, and buy it in bulk as well. And then I just um, divide it when I get it home into one or one and a half pound packages, sometimes two if I'm making something big. I measure everything out to pounds and we put it in, we use the vacuum seal. Yeah, me I too. Love, food I saver. Love I love my food saver. Yeah, I love the food savers. So. Oh, and Christine, that sounds amazing. Christine Hickman said her husband smoked a brisket today. Oh, uh, oh that sounds wonderful. With uh, Traeger or how did he smoke it? There's so many. There's Pet Boss. There's, you know, Traeger. Yeah, there's pellet ones. And then there's yeah. the electric smokers, like the Master Belts and things like that. I've owned mm -hmm. both. I really enjoyed my Traeger pellet grill, to be honest. My um, smoker. We yeah, love, love our Traeger. Yeah. And Jennifer Piccolo says, I season the onion and peppers when cooking. She says you need a little salt. Exactly. There's certain things you do want to just add that little little pinch. Absolutely. Yeah. But and I always add a little bit of salt when I'm sauteing my onions because I feel it draws a lot of the extra moisture out of it, too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, you know, That's so this has good, the fat yeah. and I think it's ground. Mm -hmm. and it's a little fatty. We uh, had a measuring cup and I wanted to see how much it was. And it's like, I drained it like crazy. We were making tacos a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And it was a little over a half a cup of fat that solidified into a hockey puck. And I was like, oh, I bet. <laughs> I mean, it's flavorful, but look at that. It's just swimming in it. Like, ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, so for those of you that are just joining, we are cooking Walt's chili. That's the recipe. You'll also find the recipe in the description of the video. Uh, we are doing a recipe that is available from Carnation Cafe at Disneyland. This is the recipe, or close to the recipe that Walt Disney loved having himself when he went into the parks. Yeah, this is the uh, park. this is the Carnation Cafe version that they've again modified today's palette to ties ingredients so i'm gonna leave a little bit of the beast in there and add a little Ooh, i'm running out of wills oh you got it so onion and bell pepper Just one small onion and one bell pepper i go for green so you do red um speaking of the devil Alton brown, kosher salt, but yes, just a skosh. Nice. Just a skosh. Now, do you prefer, because see, I use kosher salt too. And I think Richard thinks, my Richard, not the Orlando guy, thinks that I'm nuts for using the kosher salt. But I really like it because I feel I can control how much I'm putting in more than with just regular table salt. You right. Know, interesting thing also with kosher salt is that it's actually a lower sodium content. Than yeah. The it's the chem the, the molecular structure of, of kosher, if you can believe it. You think salt, salt, it really isn't. And you want to stay away from Morton's, the little girl with the umbrella, with iodine. We do not need iodine in our diet. Yes, no, we um, do not. They do make it, and I use that stuff in a container. 
I use granulated table table salt. I put it in this with so no iodine. This is only for baking because the small granules are perfect. Yeah, I hardly ever use that, but you're absolutely right. That's exactly the application I use it in as well. And, and hello, Jeffrey. Welcome in. So that I'm going to just good. get this translucent. I know I'm not going to cook these to death. I mean, just to... Well, they're going to break down enough as it is when you make the chili under pressure. Right. Okay. So once you've got the uh, onions and the peppers, when do you add the garlic? I add garlic and sauce until garlic and fruit. That was weird recipe. <laughs> add garlic and sauce. Yeah. What sauce? Probably the tomatoes and all that. No, that goes on the bottom. Okay, so Tony, I like my chili on the medium side. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how this recipe goes, but I usually do what they call dumps. And I, I divide my spice blend into like three or four different portions. And I do one, a dump, like a I'll do like a third or a quarter at the beginning. And then a third of the way through, I'll put more in. I'll put more in at the end. And I just think it adds layers of flavor. And that's how I do my chili. Garlic and sauce. I don't understand what that is. So I think this is translucent. So what I'll do is I just measure, uh, do, this is how I do my garlic. A garlic burns. You don't need to cut it up that much. Is I move everything off to the side and I take my garlic and just put it in the center and toss it back and forth in the center to cook my garlic. So it just gets cooked. Get rid of some of the raw bitterness of it. Um, hi, Brian Kay, and hi, Pamela Hoffman. Welcome in. Oh, Pamela, thank you. She says it's a fun stream. Thank you. And Diana says, I wish I had this had smell vision It looks amazing so far. It is smelling very good here so far. I can't imagine. It just, I oh, it looks amazing. And yes, I definitely would try um, some poblanos uh, to add a little bit of sweet heat in there. Yeah, oh. I like layering flavors. Yeah, this, again, this is chili. You can lie and say whatever it is because, you know, some people might want it a lot spicy. Yeah, some Mar people... Marianne does bring up a good point. Some people do need iodized salt because it does add iodine to your salt, to your uh, diet for uh, your thyroid. Yes, you need iodine for your thyroid. I was reading something about when you're we're consuming too much of it because there's iodine and other things that we're getting naturally. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want too much iodine in your diet. That's where we were going, I think. Yeah. yeah. No, you want to. Yeah, you don't. You need it because I have both my parents had thyroid, my mom had thyroid cancer, and they both had thyroid problems. So bo they both have both of the thyroids out. I, how they both got it and how to deal with it, I think it was more environmental for them. Yeah. So I'm just now toasting a little bit. I'm turning this bad boy off. So now we're going to dump. We are ready to go to town. Oh, and thanks, Jeffrey Pop. Yeah, that's just how I've always done it. I don't know how I learned that. I think I watched it on a cooking show once where they, or a chili competition. I was at something like that where they, they layer everything and do spice dumps throughout the cooking process. So yeah. Doug, carefully, you're, you're carefully. Yeah, it's really, really fatty. So I'm just going to. Well, a little bit of the fat is okay. No, I, yeah, you want flavor. Gosh, you know, I'm not. But I'm just. Oh, I bet that would work well, Julie, actually. <laughs> yeah, don't tell the hubs. <laughs> I'll take it down. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, just that's a lot of fat. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lena. I appreciate that. I am doing much better. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're thrilled that you're back, Donna. Yeah, thank you. I've been looking forward to this when we talked about it actually late last year. So we got a onion, pepper, garlic, meats. And now we're going to do a perpetual dump. And we're going to add spices. So since this is off... We are going to now 
add everything. Now this one has, okay, let me get mine. Chili powder is not really chili powder. There's Gep Hearts. There's a whole bunch of different ones. I actually got mine through Penzies. They're out of Colorado. Oh, I love their spices. And I got what was kind of their medium chili powder. And I looked at the ingredients. The chili powder is a bunch of chilies. But it could be also added stuff and can make things taste funny. So I actually bought their chili powder from them. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Can I do any swinging over here? Suing or swinging? Suit like a sous chef. Um, no. You're just coming up. All right. So I can. So you're okay getting all the spices and everything on yeah, your own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, so well, right now he's. So adding... I'm, I'm doing one tablespoon, and it said a half. I'm going two. Yeah, the recipe does call for one and a half tablespoons. But I mean, these are kind of rough. So I want two tablespoons. This is really good chili pepper. It's spend the money and get good chili pepper. I agree. That is one thing that, please, you know. Mm -hmm. I make it fresh, fresh because fresh. if you don't have fresh ingredients and fresh spices, they're going to be so muted and not taste right in your recipes. That is so right. A tablespoon of cumin. Yeah, that's about a tablespoon. Yeah, try to keep your spices, use them. Buy them in, at the bulk. We buy ours at the bulk section, but we buy such little at a time, blow through it. And... Yeah. Can you keep them in the freezer? I've heard you can keep them in the freezer and they last longer. Is that true? Or does it kill cinnamon. some of I did cinnamon and eventually it lost and it, it died. Don, Donna? I was going to say it might kill stuff in, in like the taste of it. It does. And you Donna? have to watch out that if it gets contaminated, it can stop molding. Donna? Yes, Arnie? Jeffrey Pop just made a, left a comment in the stream. Could you highlight that one? As, as oh, you betcha. Highlight. Oh, Oh, yes. Yes. We know about Cincinnati chili, don't we, Ben? <laughs> yes, we do. Go, go tell. So here's cayenne pepper. It says three quarters of a teaspoon. Yeah. I'm so, Since I'm doing it, I'm only going to do a half. Ben's going to tell a little story here. Yeah. Yay, uh, Ben. Hi. A few months ago, I got a package from my friend Sean in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Sean grew up in the Cincinnati region, and he's very familiar with Cincinnati chili. It does have a different flavor palette than Southwest chili, which is kind of what we're dealing with here. Uh, and it does have a, a, a taste of cinnamon. I guess some would put cocoa in it. Allspice, well. I think. All I think spice, it's allspice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think it. that's because it was invented, if I'm not mistaken, by a, a Greek immigrant cook. And that's where the allspice came into play with that chili recipe. Okay. Well, at any rate, uh, we recently posted an episode of Life with Ben on our channel, Pepper Tree Villa, that did a comparison of the two kind of larger chili chains in the Cincinnati area, that is Gold Star Chili and Skyline Chili. And uh, if you're interested, can someone drop the link for that episode in the stream here? That way people can see what we did uh, when we posted that episode. So that's that's all I have to say for now. That's my It was episode. a great episode, guys. You need to check it out. It was really good and well done. <laughs> this is tomato paste. Who has buys those little cans of tomato paste and you're like, you need a couple of tablespoons or whatever. What I do? Greetings, Jim. Welcome in. Is I take the can, take what I need, and then I just freeze the rest by measuring it out. So this is beep. Did I see? Did I see Jen, Mr. Yeah. More Sunshine, please? Yes, yes you did. Please. Season's greetings. <laughs> Season's greetings, Jen. So Doug took three tablespoons of tomato paste out of our freezer. Yeah, I, you, I think it's still good. We actually had a package that was three tablespoons of tomato paste exactly. So um, we were able to use that. Then you also have to dump a can of diced tomatoes. You want to get the uh, can of Yeah, you want to do the can over for me? Uh, yeah, sure. So, you don't want to leave stuff in the freezer too long. It sucks the flavor out of it. Um, yeah. Get the can of so, I looked at it and I'm like, mm, it was about a year old, but I mean, tomato paste kind of. And I put it in a zap and I just squirted it out. I should have used phrase. So, okay, I posted the link to um, the Life with Ben Cincinnati Chili episode. Oh, thank you, Donna. Donna. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. How many people try to feel like they're strong? 
and can't open up a jar to save their life, okay? There is this contraption, yes, on Amazon. It's a clamp. I use this thing for everything because I say, why bother? Here, pull, it down, pull it down over the pot so you can actually see what the pot what the clamp is. Right here? Oops. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. So it's a clamp. You don't have to strain anymore and say, hey, someone, can you come over? You just clamp it on the sides. Squeeze. And you just squeeze it and you twist. Nice. And you know, I didn't have to put any effort in it because this thing was not going to come off. Hi, and Timothy Rainwaters. Welcome in. So I need to put two tablespoons of better than bouillon beef space. <laughs> right? Is it two tablespoons? Yeah. So of the bully of the beef space, yeah. it was two tablespoons. I'm gonna mix it up. This right here is nothing but basically salt. Oh, Ben, let me go ahead and get that can of chili, the can of beans ready too. And can you rinse them? Yes. Hi, Rosalie. Welcome in. So I'm going plop. This gives it that beastie. Okay, so Ben, if I can have And Richard the Orlando guy says, leave it to Doug to pre-measure out his tomato paste in advance and freeze it for dishes such as this. Well, you're opening up that stupid can and you only need, oh, this recipe called for, you know, a certain amount and you're like, ugh. And you don't want to put the can. I did it once where I put the can, put cellophane over it, and just put it in a refrigerator. Completely forgot about it, and the whole thing molded. Mm -hmm. So the night before yeah. or whatever, I just put it in it, and it's like, okay, these are three tablespoons, because it seems like lately that's the, the amount. So I don't have to say tomato paste is expensive, but it just gets very irritating when you have to throw something away that you could have used it. Yeah. So. Hi, Aaron Wright. <laughs> and Brandy Disney, a boiler up. Welcome in. Okay, so I I just opened a can of beans and I had to drain them and then rinse them. I'm putting that in the pot as well. Okay, yeah, the history about the thing about chili and beans. We're doing an instant pot because it's only going to cook basically 45 minutes. If this was simmering or in the crock pot, do not put the beans in first. Now I got to find out what camera and do. A it. lot of people and say that chili should not have beans in it, but but this is Walt's chili and beans. So he liked the beans, so they're in there. <laughs> that's, that's why they're there. A can and of diced, 28 can diced tomatoes. And you don't drain those, right? No. Okay. And, and uh, Timothy said, wants to know if I'm in California or if you guys are in Florida. And the answer is we're both. Um, I'm at my home in Florida, and PTV are at their home in California. So yeah. we're on both coasts today. Yeah, we're in the San Francisco Bay Area. So Doug's getting some water. This is uh, mm -hmm. the one and a half cups of water. Yeah, just just give yourself some liquid. I think I might almost go up too because um, there's like no liquid in this. Cynthia wants us to mail some of the her. And um, yes, Pamela, we can still get the chili dog at Casey's Corner at Disney World. Oh, that's a good thing. Yep. Okay. It's delicious. Okay, there we go. I, I'm a mess here. So we have liquid. I put a little bit more because crock uh, Instapots need a little bit more liquid than the average bear. Yeah. So Hi, Josh. Everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. So I'm just going to probably sprinkle just a skosh. Oh, hey, Josh. Just Hi, Jack. More salt. Um, not that I don't think there's enough seasoning in it. So rel read out the recipe really out loud. Okay, sure. And I'm also posting it here on screen. Oh, perfect. We use approximately okay. a quarter cup of olive oil for the whole process. Three quarter cup of pound, three quarter, three quarter of a pound of beef stew meat, one small onion diced, okay. one medium green bell pepper diced, four cloves of garlic minced, a pound of ground beef, a tablespoon of cumin, uh, one and a tablespoons of chili powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, three quarters of a tablespoon of cayenne pepper. Did you add the cayenne pepper? Yes. Three tablespoons tomato paste, one can of diced tomatoes, two tablespoons of beef paste, one and a half cups of water, and one can of pinto beans rinsed and drained. 
and then you can yes add some spices. Okay, and the spice I'm gonna add because I thought it was add that they wanted onion powder. I'm adding some more garlic, garlic powder. Oh, Jill DeForest says that Waltz Chili is also available at the Crystal Palace at Magic Kingdom. Yes, it is. It's on the buffet. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. It's Salt, amazing. pepper, garlic, your seasoning. I mean, this is what it is. So this is basic chili beans. Now, personally, let's get it all in here. This is up to the exact line. So this is a six quart. Um, again, these are incredible. So we're done. Oh my gosh, that looks good. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm gonna. I have to clean. I'm taking some home for dinner, right? That yeah, I'm not amazing. eating this. To be honest with you, I've done this so many, so many chilies. I make it and eat it the next day. I think chili the same day to me is, uh, I, I, I think it needs to sit in the refrigerator to melt. Yes, and I so, agree. So we're not going to eat this tonight. I'll try it. But so I make sure your Instapot, I don't know why people don't say this. Make this sure your seal is clean. Yes, that's very important. And welcome in, Ron Davis. Thank you Hi. so much for being here. So I'm going to go like this. And it's on high. I'm going to go up here. Beep, 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 beep. Pressure cook. On high for 30 minutes. Beep. Start. Okay. I'm going to clean up this, ask questions, but the chili is done. And while Doug Yay. is doing some cleanup, we're going to put Ben, ben. in the kitchen. Let me get Yay, him. Ben. So Ben's coming to the kitchen. Yeah, let's uh, clean up all this. this. Not clean up, but I just need to. <laughs> okay, everyone, run for your life. Okay. <laughs> Don't give him any power appliances. No, he's, uh, I, I, no. I have trust issues, so I only got a recipe for him to just add liquids together. I couldn't find a recipe that I felt like. So we're making ben standing is, on green pepper here. Yeah. Ben well, is I making know. Ben is making Tahitian Terrace Punch. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with Disneyland and its history, the Tahitian Terrace in Adventureland opened in 1962 uh, next to what would soon become the Enchanted Tiki Room or Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. It's very specific that it was Walt Disney's because. He actually had to pay for it himself. Well, Roy wouldn't give him the money. Roy would not give him the money for the attraction in the park. So he said, if you want it, you got to pay for it yourself. And he, he did. He sold a life insurance policy to get the audio, audio animatronics. This was a technology that he was just creating. Cost a fortune. Roy said no. So he sold his life insurance policy. That's how we got the Tiki, the tiki Room. True, true story. Uh -huh. And the start of audio animatronics being used in the park. Well, he knew it was expensive. So that was in 1963 that the, the Tiki Room opened, and that was the first audio animatronic attraction at all. Then fast forward a year, year and a half to the World's Fair, which everything was audio animatronic, and that's where he honed his craft with Imagineering to create. That's because the corporate sponsors paid for it all. Oh, yeah. So you knew it was going to be horribly expensive. So thanks to people at Ford and Pepsi-Cola and uh, State of Illinois. Well, you do. Uh, the, there's another story, again, true story. I have to wash my hands a million times. When he, all these corporations told we want these attractions for the World Fair, he said, okay, you will pay us to do it, but we're only going to charge you this amount. The, the kicker was, and they didn't. the corporations didn't care, is Walt wanted all the attractions back for him. Right. And at the corporation's like, what do we need these things? After it's done, we were going to pitch it. So there was a stipulation. He knew he wanted to put it back into his park in California. So he made them pay for all the technology, for all the stuff that Walt couldn't afford, so he can get it back. And these corporations are like, wow, you didn't charge us that much? Well, the kicker was is they ended up getting screwed out of it, not Walt. It was really brilliant. Okay. And welcome I'm, in Pete McDevitt. So great to have you here. I know you had a very busy weekend. It looked like so much fun. And I'm so glad you got to see all of our friends. And I wish I could have made it up there, but it was a little bit far north for me right now with my foot and everything. And I'm so glad you got to see so many of our friends. Welcome in. They got a little too excited here. 
A little too excited. A little too excited. When Doug cooks, he cooks everywhere. No, I don't make a mess, but I like to wipe. I don't like cross contamination. Safety first. Okay. Hey, I've been cooking for so many people, not a single person got sick off of my food. And that's something to be proud of. That's a good thing. <laughs> All, right. All right. So is everything here that I need? I don't know. I need some I need lemon juice. Oh yeah. yeah the the, lemon I'll, I'll, get the, I'll get the lemon juice for you. Okay. You're gonna learn how to do uh lemon. Yeah. Um this I need a three quarter cup measuring. Why? For pineapple juice. Oh. Here you go. Okay. Do you why don't oh. you just use this? The one, the one do one everything, one. everything liquid. Come on, guys. Oh, yes. do okay. liquid. We'll just use the, use the right measuring tools. Okay. There you go. Um, all right. So this is going to be a challenge for me. Okay, I'm sticking back. <laughs> That's fun. Do I need like a, a, a bottle opener or do I can opener for this? Or yeah, yo, you, let me get you a church key. The church key? Yes. What can opener? This is a church key is, is yeah, that's a church key. That's a church it opens key. pans. Uh, thanks, Donna. So you can pour <laughs> it out. Yeah. Okay. So this recipe, we're going to actually take something out of it. This is the real deal from the Tahitian Terrace. It also adds a half a cup of sugar. Oh, dear boy. In, wow. in the recipe, she even Marcy wrote a note saying, you know, I'm all about being a purist, but we all, that would make it cloyingly sweet. Yeah, that's like a sugar bomb. Yeah. So no. while we have the sugar out, it's not for this recipe. This is going to be for the tea cakes, which are coming later. So, no, we're not adding the extra cup, a half a cup of sugar, because it's just no way. Okay. Uh, Richard says, move the pitcher so we can see him struggling. <laughs> a water. I, I need to wipe because it's already spilling pineapple juice all over. Oh yeah, you don't want to do that. Okay. Here, okay, let, me, let me get the angle a little better on that for you, so you can see what's going on. Okay. There we go. All right. Nice. Okay, here a nice washcloth. Thank you. You know, pineapple does create ants. Let's sugar yeah, we don't want the ants. No. So, only, yeah, the the only thing we're taking out on this, again, we're purists, but we also have to think about our pancreas. Yes. Um, okay, so let me help you out there, Ben. Uh, you Hi, Tina. Welcome in. Oh, you want the lemon juice in? This no, no, no. Mine's well. the pineapple juice in. All right. But, uh, I can't do this by myself. I took it out already. Oh, I said I wanted to see goodness. him all feeble use it. This is, no, no, no. I'll do this for Ben. So, Ben, you're also going to want to have... Let's get this out so we can actually see. There you I've go. Oh, that looks much better. Can you see that well? Yep, looks great. Okay, so you're going to want three tablespoons of lemon. The one thing that we have in California is a lot of people use lemons, lemon trees for landscaping. So everyone's giving lemon juice to everyone. That's amazing. Oh, I yeah. love fresh okay. lemon juice. So that don't get this stuck in the box. It will yeah. squirt everywhere. So that's two about two tablespoons. We're gonna mm -hmm. go so small, in the uh, we're gonna go home in small like Southern California. Yep. Yum. Okay, so that's two tablespoons. We we'll put that in the in the uh, well in the pitcher. Yes. So let's put that in there. There we go. And let me get. I'm letting them do this. One this more tablespoon. Of yeah, they're making juice. me super nervous. There you go. Nice. All right. Next, uh, three tablespoons of grenadine. Okay. And you can Hi, Dave. Yes, it has Hi, Dave. 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 Number four Dave. Yeah, we Welcome go. in. So, yeah, you're adding uh, three tablespoons. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of red dye number 40. <laughs> All right. Really? That's three? That was two. This oh, is three. Okay. I saw this recipe and since I just love the history and I wish I, someone never got to experience when I started really going to Disneyland 
this was already gone, this restaurant. So I've always been fascinated about the history of it. And okay, so we've got the pineapple juice, the grenadine, and the lemon juice. Next, we have to open up the concentrated or uh, grape juice. Now, now, the original recipe calls for Welch's grape juice, and that's because Welch's used to be a sponsor at Disney. Uh, so would that be an option, though, if you can't find the frozen concentrate? Right. You can. Well, they won't concentrate. Yeah. So you okay. got to find the frozen juice. And 100%, no added sugar. Right. Oh, you know what? You do it. You pour it right. I'm impressed. <laughs> Is it plopped out? I think so. Yeah, well, it's yeah. all up. Yeah, we're, we're done. Keep Put it in the crash can. Oh. Don't pause you go. <laughs> Clean up your mess. Messes, messes. Carlos, I hope you're paying attention because Suzanne says you got to make this, so. Okay, so then I need, yeah. where's the tablespoon? Uh, it's uh, in the drawer. I got mine very super dirty. You're going to have to oh. get another one. This one is a teaspoon. I need a tablespoon. Where, where would I, where would I well, find did you, those? You know the little, uh, the little glass that you were just using? No, he needs that for powder. Oh, for powder. Yeah. Oh, here, let me do it. Let me find it. Yes, Janie B. I believe it was thawed uh, frozen grape juice concentrate. Is that correct? Yes, frozen grape juice concentrate. There you go. And but it was thawed. Make, yeah, you want to make sure it's 100% juice. Because a lot okay. of this, some of them are just like, Part juice, but this one you need to make sure it's one hundred percent juice. No sugar. No sugar. Right. Added. Okay. So and then can you refreeze it because you're not using the whole bunch of? Oh no, you use the whole can. Yeah, twelve so, ounces. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, okay. Never mind. What camera am I looking at? Uh, right over here. Uh, right in front of me. Okay. Hi, Jane so, and Travels. So, so this is Tang. This is the orange juice that the astronauts used to drink. And it calls for three tablespoons of this. You can tell when this recipe was created. Shake it. Perfect. Perfect. Work it. Okay. One. And you're adding three to that. Yeah. Essentially almost like a quarter of a cup. Isn't three tablespoons a quarter of a cup? It's close to a quarter cup. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hearing noises. All right. That's so. Ooh. Can I just set that off to the side? You, you can take the tablespoon. Oh, you can? And then you need to add five, five cups, cups of water. Look what I did. I gave you four filtered water. Oh, thank you. So I'm pouring this in here. Okay, and then and then one then, more. What's in here? And again, this one was cup. served yeah. at the I know, but what was in it? Uh, Pineapple juice? I, yeah. This was served at the Tahitian Terrace in Adventureland at Disneyland. The Tahitian Terrace was open from 1962 until 1993. It wow. closed in 93 to be remodeled, and it became Aladdin's oasis. What a waste. Sadly, it was never the same. But the Tahitian Terrace was great. They used to do a nightly or, like, weekends, uh, a, a regular floor show, full-on dinner. It was exotic food for its time. It wow. was delicious. I love the Tahitian Terrace. Okay. So this is the Tahitian Terrace Punch. All the ingredients have been put in. And uh, all we need now are a couple of glasses with some ice. Yeah. Sands. Looks great. Well, the... it looks like grape juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, they, they made it a little bit more of a Tahitian flavor with the pineapple. Now remember, the recipe says half a cup of sugar, but we did not add that because it would be cloyingly sweet. Yeah. yeah. And again, we have to worry about our pancreas. <laughs> so, Ben, why don't you do the honors and give it a taste and see, what see it if fits. it is. See if but, it does need the sugar. Oh, no, I know it doesn't. <laughs> but now, there is also in the recipe is that you can make an all adult version by adding an ounce or two of rum to this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, rum? So, yeah. I'm going to do rum with mine, but I'm going to do. Oh, that's delicious. Okay, stop hogging. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Stop hogging. <laughs> I wish <laughs> you commented. For those wondering, Ben is challenge, kitchen challenged. I truly am. It's this, a running theme on Life with Ben on our channel. So this is what it looks like. It's dark red. It looks... Now, I have a question. Is this another thing that if you were to leave it in the fridge to like kind of let the flavors marry, it would get more flavorful? Or do you well, think it's just good as is? Probably both. Okay. 
it's delicious as it is right now, but I think if you if you got it into the refrigerator and chilled it for a couple of hours, <laughs> I think it'd be delicious. I yeah. would probably make a cup. A they said three quarters of a cup of pineapple juice. That's not right. And Dave Stragand said, y'all just inspired my wife to make chili this week. Oh, oh good. Nice. Yes. He said, you have to put three chili emojis because if you put two, they look like ruby slippers. <laughs> <laughs> Do a cup of pineapple. Okay. Change it to one cup of pineapple. Yeah, one cup of pineapple. Okay. He wants it to be one cup? Mm -hmm. so increase it just a little more bit. Like, more of a pineapple flavor. Okay, so take notes, guys, in the chat. If you want to make this, up the pineapple juice to a cup. There we go. I just changed. And leave out the half cup of sugar, uh, unless yeah. you like it super duper sweet. Oh my gosh! It does no, not need the sugar. Gross. This is delicious. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and add the word optional to that as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to go all adult. Huh? There you go. Are you sure you want that one, or do you want the coconut rum? I don't know if I want coconut. Should we put coconut in it? Let's try with coconut rum. Okay, we were just going to do standard Bacardi, but um, I'm going to do an ounce in mine. I agree, Diana. It, I think this could be a great slushy. So there we are. Oh, yeah. It would make a great slushy. We're going to oh, add a shaved ice. Oh, yeah, with shave ice? Yes. Yeah, I think that is a very good and idea. And actually, that's a good idea. We don't know if they even did that. So gonna I'm just going to put a little bit of a uh, little coconut rum in there. An ounce. And then he'll see what that's like. Mm -hmm. well, that's really going to up because it. Gonna up it. <laughs> Use that spoon. <laughs> ben, the Orlando guy says boozy Ben equals fun Ben. Uh, yeah, but I have to drive. <laughs> well, oh, there it is. <laughs> I was adding a little more to it. Yeah, it's just, it just, I feel like all I do is taste grape juice. Yeah, be careful because remember. When you make things like Long Island Ice here, other cocktails, just adding more alcohol so that you can taste it may not, not good be a thing. good thing. Yeah. You don't want to overdo it. Oh, there we go. Tony <laughs> Pepper says, why is the rum always warm? It's a little coconut. It gives that the rum taste. It's actually delicious. I'm really happy we picked this one. Ooh, we are now cooking. Okay. Happy and so oh, got a level. So this is, ooh, don't, this is it hot? I like mm -hmm. this. All right. All right. So that's Tahitian Terrace. Here we go, Arnie. Wonderful. Good job, Ben. Uh, now what do we get to do ooh. next? Do I not get applause? Oh, gosh, no get way. Applause for that. Yay! <laughs> All I did was. Thing was not that challenging. Oh, welcome in, Julie. You're not late. We're, we've got Walt's chili in the Instant Pot, and Ben just made some Tahitian Terrace Punch. Okay. Now we're going to slightly clean up this mess. Yes. So everybody has one of these Tupperware pitchers because mm -hmm. in, because yeah. you have to have a Tupperware pitcher. In. Yes. Stick it in the fridge. So, yeah, this is actually really good. I would tell you to spike it. So now Hi, we, Craig. Welcome in. Now we need to clear the counter there because we are about to work on tea cakes. Tea cakes. Ooh. Hi, Chris, the Disney baker. Welcome in. So, Ben, you're going to set the pineapple juice aside. Uh, just put it aside. We're going to be taking the pineapple juice that's from that can and putting it into the freezer in small sections yeah. so that we can go ahead and uh, uh, use that pineapple juice at another time. Well, we buy pineapple in the little tiny cans instead of opening it when we want a drink or something. Unfortunately, our store, which Doug calls the Frugal Hoosier, was not available. Uh, that, that particular size of can was not available. Welcome in from Jamaica, Anne Marie. So Thank nice you. to have you here. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. Great. Thank you so much, Anne Marie. That's great to have you here. Oh, did, did I see the Disney Baker join? Oh, yeah. great. Uh, so, yeah, next we're going to be doing another recipe. Now, this one is going to need a little bit of an explanation. Tea lounge tea cakes were not necessarily only at Disneyland. This was something of a phenomenon 
in the 40s and 50s. They served these at Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, in Burbank at the commissary. So uh, we're doing a version of tea cakes that was very, very, very popular at the time in Southern California. And this particular recipe, we're just going to put together. Uh, Doug, do you want the recipe here? Yes, please. Okay, let me get you. I clean my mask because. Oh, no worries, Doug. Hi, Doreen. Welcome in. And Leanne Blackmore says that when she was growing up, uh, they would get the court jester's punch at King Stefan's Banquet Hall in Cinderella Castle. And she wishes she could find that recipe. Oh, that, that sounds like a challenge. Yeah. I mean, it's I, almost like everything is now because of the, the, the wonders of the internet. We are all about vintage recipes, especially when it comes to Disney. Mm -hmm. We love old Disney recipes. We were doing some research, and here, let me, let me uh, put the camera on me for this one. We were doing some research for this one, and uh, it, in this case, it came from this book that we use, Eat Like Walt. Look for it on Amazon or something, because it's a great cookbook. Oh, it's, it is on Amazon. It's the bee's knees. When the park mm -hmm. opened in 1955, they had restaurants all over the place that were sponsored by different companies. In this case, in 1956, Chicken of the Sea sponsored the pirate ship restaurant in Fantasyland. Now, Chicken of the Sea, of course, is tuna. Once you've got tuna going, you got a recipe from the 50s. In this case, it was tuna burgers. And the tuna burgers were wildly popular from Disneyland. Oh, huge. But as we were reading the recipe to possibly recreate it, Doug wanted to, uh, well... He wasn't very happy about it. He doesn't like well, the fact that it was tuna, for one thing. Well, to me, when I opened up a can of tuna, it smells like cat food. So I always call tuna cat food with mayonnaise. It's just so gross. So now, I is, just... A lot of people like tuna. Yeah, so no, I'm not begrudging. This particular recipe was... Um, you had to throw it together, had various ingredients, and then you put it into the hamburger bun, and it was in a certain order where you put pickles and other things... And then you put it all together, wrap it up, and you throw it in the oven and bake it for like 20 minutes. Oh. And so that that just kind of sickened Doug. He did not like the thought of that. So we thought we got yeah. to do different than that. But I love the idea because I heard many, many stories. We have, hang out with a lot of old-timer Disneyland people, and they uh, lament and wax over nostalgia of eating there. When they redid Tomorrow, uh, Fantasyland in 1983 or 82, there was so much dry rot and moisture, the thing just actually crumbled when they started demolishing it. It didn't take nothing to, to get rid of it because it was partially in water. Because they were gonna take it and actually move it, but it just disintegrated into a zillion to powder. So that story is by Tony Baxter, who helped, uh, was one of the major Imagineers behind the new fantasy land that we got in 1983. Yes, I actually had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Baxter at a um, at an event where he was uh, speaking about stuff like that. And um, he was very knowledgeable and very entertaining. Oh, he's he's in, he's very down to earth, very home. Yeah. And he also understands the fan concept because yes, he, he in food in the late 60s before he actually got to be head in Imagineer. That's and right. his major, major claim to fame that he will put on, he is Disneyland Paris. He was the lead architect, the lead designer, the lead Imagineer for everything. So yep. you know, Walt's Disneyland in Anaheim, Tony Baxter, that's Tony Baxter's park. Oh, okay. yeah. His big breakout was, of course, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Well, that was what really got him into it. Oh, God, this floor is a mess. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, I think we'll be scrubbing the floor after the show. Oh, well, this floor needs seriously help. Um, and so well, not, I don't mean to interject, but I just wanted to point out that Richard, the Orlando guy said that court jester's punch was Hawaiian punch. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, make stuff simple. Cause this is like a fancy kind of thing. So tea lounge, tea cake. So, um, going back to, oh, also his real claim to fame too, is that he helped figure out the ride vehicles, and he was also one of the lead Imagineers to Indiana Jones, the you know the car which is now Dinosaur at Animal Kingdom. Right, Canada. right. So he, his thing is Indiana Jones in Paris, yeah, and Paris theme park. When they did the 30th anniversary, he was there, and 
everybody was treating Tony as a god there because he helped do this ceremony for the 30th anniversary there to celebrate this past right. month in April. And he wrote about it. He goes, he says, yeah, I, everybody treated me like Walt, but it's his park. He did everything to it. He okay. fixed it all. So yeah, ama amazing guys. So we're going to do tea clowns. I think these are like lemon cupcakes, essentially. Tea clowns? Mm -hmm. tea, tea cakes. Did I say tea clowns? Yeah, I said tea clowns. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the all-purpose flour, the baking powder, and the salt and sift it all together. Really? In a smaller bowl. Oh, you're going to give me the small bowl? Yeah. I use these little things. Do you see these things don't move? If you don't have tile countertops, I have granite here. These are melanin bowls that have a hard or a kind of like a rubber. So very, and these things do not move. See how yeah, I, slip. I have those too. I love these. These are all, I use them all I use. the time. These melanin yep. bowls are God. I mean, mm -hmm. I love them. You saw me when I was making the horrendous caramel apple cookies on Monday. I did. I, did. <laughs> I had them sitting there. This didn't move, but I was hand mixing. And the yeah. bowl was moving the slice. See, it just doesn't move. Yeah, do you, so if you have not watched that particular episode of PTV Live from Monday night, these came it from was William Sonoma, but they're just called Melamine. Yeah, and mine are, I'm, I think mine are KitchenAid. Yeah, KitchenAid makes them. Yeah. These are the William Sonoma. I don't know why they're dirty. Why is there a stain there? I'm not sure. Hi, Dana Marie. Welcome in. But yeah, they're different colors, but um, my mom had a bowl, a set of these. And I know oh, nice. she dropped them and she didn't. She's like, I didn't think they broke, but guess what? They broke. She said she, oh, just, yeah. moved the, she just moved it. It slipped. It hit the ground and it, it just broke in half. Oh, dear. I'm like, can you get me and find me? I can't find it. So I ended up having a third set. So I just gave her one of mine because sometimes you can only have so many. Um, Thanks, Julie. See, this actually um, was suggested to us by Richard, the Orlando guy. Um, when he found out I was having surgery, he said, wouldn't it be a great idea to do a cooking stream takeover with your friends? And I said, well, yeah, that would be perfect. One and a half cups yeah. Of yeah. 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 <laughs> do you want to weigh it or do you want to? We're just going to do normal cups and stuff. Okay, because we'll normally... get the scale all the way. Yeah, we don't have to get it. Because we don't, we just gave everybody. Oh, thanks, Dana Marie. Appreciate that. And hi, Amy. And the half cup measure. Okay. That's what washroom and dryers are for. Okay. Go for so many so we're going to go ahead and start with one and a half cups of all purpose flour. Oh, I get to sit down. Thank you, everybody. Peace <laughs> out. Great time. So, Arnie, um, we yes. have a question from yes. Surfer Girl Cherie. Um, she wants to know if you guys have been to Disneyland Paris. <laughs> I have actually. I went Wonderful. in the summer of 1999 and I absolutely loved it. I found that the park was beautiful. It was well detailed. And of course, they spent a lot of money and attention on the castle because of course, yeah. in Europe, you've got competition with real castles. So they made that castle stand out. It is my favorite castle of all the castles I've seen in the parks. Although Sleeping Beauty Castle will always be near and dear to my heart at Disneyland. Absolutely. And um, yes, Megan, this is the surgery that will allow me to go base jumping again. So we've got a base jumping date coming up. <laughs> Quarter teaspoon of salt. Uh, I'm going to sit down. Uh, sit down for a second. Doug. I'll take care. So above this little couch and everybody see that we go live. I don't think you can see this little... Am I down here? Can people see me? No, 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 no. They can't. And I agree, JDB. Disneyland Paris does look very pretty for its 30th anniversary. I agree. I I, I agree. Totally oh. agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could do that. Okay, here we go. go. Hi, everybody. Okay. It's now we're going to, I'm sitting down on, you know, control camp, control center line. Right here, Sam McKinn was an illustrator artist for the Disney company. And... This was the original park map that actually called, it says right there, Euro Disney. When Disneyland opened up, it was called Euro Disney. It didn't change until Disneyland Paris until I think it was 97, 98. So that's Euro Disney. And it says Euro Disneyland. And it has all the French terms and it has old Pat Mark. And it's actually signed by Sam McCann, the illustrator who did the first, the very first park map of Disneyland Paris. So it's framed right above the couch. Now we have um, a big replica print of the John Hinch illustration of Epcot, the opening day uh, 
picture of Epcot by John Hinch. That will be replacing that because that's been up there for 13 years. We need to cycle out artwork because we have so much of it. You only have so many wall, wall places. So that's Disneyland Paris. And those are the attraction posters of Disneyland Paris. The that's really Phantom cool. Man Matter, the Castle, the Orbitron, and Adventure Isle. One day, I hopefully will do it. Um, you now it's one of our dreams to also experience uh, Tokyo because Tokyo seems to be in the news lately. Yeah. Did they did they make these tea cakes for Club Thirty Three? No, oh. these were made at the studio. Okay, let me go. Yeah. And we actually have a question. Um, Diana Murphy wants to know. It's and your your question is not dumb, Diana. It says this is a dumb question. But what is the difference between a tea cake and a tea biscuit? Oh, that is actually a good biscuit. It's tea a very biscuit good question. Is a, a tougher consistency. It's, a it's more like a cookie. Well, and in, it's English. It's Europe. It's in England. Cookies are called biscuits. Yeah. And cakes are, you know, fairy cakes are actually what called cupcakes here. Yeah, fairy so, yeah. cakes. So you go anywhere, you can't find cupcakes in Europe or in England. They call them fairy cakes. And that's what we're making here. We are essentially making cupcakes. Cupcakes. They're little small little sponge cakes. Okay, let's let's have you know. let's let's have you talk about uh, your experience at Club Thirty Three and uh, a visit from Pluto. Picture <laughs> <laughs> no. this. Disneyland July sixteenth. It was a day before. Disneyland's birthday, uh, 2008. It was 2008. It was 2008. We uh, had lunch. We had reservations. We had lunch there at Club 33. And we sat in a, a table for two that is facing outside of the window. And it was just Arnie and I having lunch. And, it, you know, again, we're very blessed and grateful that we got to do the Club 33. But we were there, and when you're a fan, you do not leave. You pretty much homestead the place because you're in a place that not anybody really can go to. So let's just say we really took our time. <laughs> well, <laughs> characters are not generally known to go walk through the club, but they did. Mickey and Pluto decided to hang out and see the members, and they were goofing around, literally goofing around. When Pluto and Mickey came to our table, got all excited, I got up and I wanted to take pictures. So I got off to the side and I started taking pictures and we, Arnie was interjecting. We were talking to Mickey and Pluto and I mean, we were talking, this is really intimate to be with characters, which is very rare uh, to have that you know interaction with characters. And Pluto got so excited, he tipped our, went to our table and the glass of water fell on it. Oh, oh no. Ground, Pluto <laughs> looked up Looked at Mickey. Pluto got on his hand, all hand for hand, all fours, lifted up his leg like he peed. Oh dear! And <laughs> Mickey, uh, Mickey is pointing them like bad, bad dog. Oh, that's the funny. whole thing. And all the members who were still after the lunch rush, I guess, mm -hmm. were, there, were laughing like I'm, <laughs> I'm red. I'm all purple because all the attention was on us. And even the Club 33 waiters and waitresses for the city, they're just kind of like looking like, what is going on? <laughs> How Pluto stopped, Mickey stopped, and he just got on all fours, bent down, lifted his leg like he peed, and, and it was just a whole scene. They got up, we hugged, and we did our thing, and then we walked away, we got in our table, we back our table, finished it. Well, there were some club members that were sitting in the corner laughing and pointing at us. And <laughs> the story. they were highly amused. So we were all four last to leave because I wanted to pick up some swag to so buy some of the little merchandise there they have. And the, the people at that table came up to us and said, you know what? We hear a lot. We come here. It's usually boring. We just kind of come up here, have a drink, have a nice meal. And then we kind of go off, you know, go to the park. You guys are the best. You guys are so cool. <laughs> you guys, we were laughing so hard. And I'm like, oh, I know. I feel like we're so bad. We're going to get kicked out. And he said, no, you guys were great. It's very rare. We hardly ever, or if we ever get characters up here. So we 
we were just, and we've been friends ever since. So because of that, we've always been in interaction with these two club members that uh, they're very, very nice and, uh, you know, share a lot of information because it's a, it's a club and it's the anonymity of the importance of they want to share it. But uh, it was ever since that, we just got to be really befriended each other. And uh, when they ask us or when you're going to come down or when you're in the park, they'll usually meet up with us. So um, that was our, my second trip inside Club 33 was at that time. It was Arnie, hysterical. Arnie's just finishing up putting the ingredients together and he's going to start the mixer any, any time now. Yeah, I need to cream the butter and the sugar right now. So let's go ahead and just start this. All up. right. And um, Richard, the Orlando guy has a fun fact. If you are new to Pepper Tree Villa, they decorate over 25 Christmas trees for the villa during the holiday season. So there you go. That is very true. That and is they're right. all And they're our, all themed. Go to our channel. It is something like is no joke. We uh, we had a, a, some other YouTubers come out during all this massive COVID stuff. Uh, we didn't have a lot of people come over because a lot of people didn't want to come over. But we had Carla and Kiko. They're here in the San Francisco Bay region. They're YouTubers. Um, they go live. And we invited them to come to see it. And they did show up at one of our viewings and they came in and they were speechless. And <laughs> every, the whole time they were here, you know, they've heard about it and they're like, yeah, right. You know, 20, 29 trees or 30 trees or 26 trees. How do you do that in a house? We're about, our house is a three bedroom house. That's about 1800 square feet. So we're not palatial, but it's big enough. And they were just blown away about the impeccable details that I'd like you know, they, they couldn't fathom it until they see it. So they interviewed us and they were here. They were, they actually missed their uh, reservations to the spaghetti factory, which is in the town 20 minutes wow. away from them because they thought they were just going to come in see a few trees and walk away. <laughs> they didn't want to leave. It's like a whole event. It was an event. I mean, the rooms, each room took like time. They asked questions mm -hmm. and I, I, they just stood there and just like, wow, wow. So, it's, They're just yes, gunny, and I can't yeah. imagine how much more beautiful they are in person. Because, guys, if if you haven't check out their channel and look for their Christmas tree videos, because they their trees are just exquisite, and the work and amount of time and detail they put into their trees is mind boggling and just gorgeous. And their trees just are beautiful works of art, and you can tell they're done with love, honestly. Uh, the video we try, but the quality and the light, the feeling. yeah, it's hard to capture it as as beautiful as it is in person. I can only imagine. It's just like when you see a Disney parade or a Disney show, fireworks or anything like that. You know how you see it mm -hmm. online. Yep, it, it's great. There's something about there's experiencing a it in person it's just a different thing it is you get to see it you know you get the facsimile of it right video, but you don't it's completely different in person and that is with just a lot of things yeah and, um you know it's great that we could share the world by youtube and video but there's something that we do need to get out in the world and experience it personally because it is it, it's just different so we are been planning and talking about it. And um, mm -hmm. when we travel, we travel with Christmas trees. Oh, I love that. So with this, uh, again, wonderful, very generous gift with Mr. Richard Howard, our suite was not appropriate without a full on Christmas tree. Well, of course. So and I, I mean, was Chatty there? Chatty, Chatty was there. We, we gifted him full on in mitten box Chatty. So we and explain what Chatty is. Chatty is the Fisher Prize Hallmark 19 uh, 2009 ornament. It's That's kind of become fun. your um, little mascot for the trees. It has. Yeah. So we needed to, of course, you know, have have tree go travel. Uh, <laughs> so we crammed. We got a, a this huge Disney duffel bag. We got a set of lights, a tree, and we set it up in the room. And I probably can only imagine that the concierge or, or our, our room people came in and go, there's a full-size Christmas tree in our <laughs> living area. It's nice to, we were all sitting there one night and there was just the light of the light on the tree. 
you know, the warmth or something about looking at the tree at night with just the glow of lights. Yeah. So we sat in that room. We had the glow of the lights of the tree. And we brought no ornaments. But guess what? The, or we bought ornaments. So every time we were buying ornaments, we took them out of the package. So, and we were adding um, ornaments to the tree. I, I just want to make sure that I, I'm adding... Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm, I'm adding some doTERRA. This is lemon extract. Okay. Oh, lemon so, extract. Wait, 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 wait. I did some research. So doTERRA oils are natural, high-end, very expensive uh, essential oils. And doTERRA is a really good brand. With this, they say extract. Oils is a concentration of like a pure. Go four. Okay. Yeah. Because this can go... Yeah, um, you don't want to go over. Yeah, no, because this could be you'd be eating soap, right? Um, and um, Cynthia says she needs, and that's in capital letters, more of Donna with PTV. And I'd like to welcome in um, Disney World Castle. She says, Hi, Donna, and everyone. Sorry, I'm checking in late. So nice to have you back, Donna. And thank you so much. I appreciate that. So, we're I got these prepared. I think you know, they say a baker's dozen. Does everybody know what a baker's dozen is? I do. Don't look it on YouTube. I know what it means. I do. When there was, what's Baker's Dozen, Ben? 13. That's right. Yay, 13. Ben! Walt's favorite number, 13. There's a lot of stories of about him in 13. Because so, he, even Disneyland's address originally was 1313 South Harbor Boulevard, and he handpicked that address. Yeah. So 13 is huge for Walt. And so, so Jim has a question. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Doug. No, these are the... So these are... Uh, they say in square, because the tea cakes it should be square, but they, this is modified with cupcakes. Yeah. That looks a little odd. Oh, you haven't put the flour in yet. No. <laughs> the flour needs to go in. What are you doing? <laughs> so, so Jim I, says, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. So these little cupcake things are ratatouille. Ratatouille if, is my all-time Oh, how adorable. Cupcake. And I hoarded which, which these. Cam which camera angle is on? Uh, the main one. Okay. So, I hoarded so these. Cupcake ratatouille cupcake wrappers. Oh, those are so cute. And finally, I decided I was making something I didn't have any. I said, you know, I got to start using my stuff. I can't just keep them. And where did you find well, those, Doug? I think I found them at like a bake shop, but I want to get Lifetime some more. So I might see if they still sell them. Oh, that's so somewhere. cool. But I love ratatouille and it has Remy on it. So we're going to use my fancy ones. I, I don't have that much left. This is all I have. I think I'd like to do more. But Welcome in by a free project. So this is supposed to make a baker's dozen, but I we gotta like see about that. Okay, so now Jim's question was fact or fiction. The PTV gang starts decorating for the next Christmas a week before the current Christmas has passed. <laughs> <laughs> um we start thinking about it. <laughs> He gets all math, scheduling, Ben comes over. We do that all in July, where we kind of like get an idea that he says, okay, I can help you out with. We only need help on three really big free trees because now that you're hybrid, uh, we have the luxury of like really taking our time and not just cramming it on the weekends. But we do need Ben's help. And we you get your help. We get about three Saturdays from your rooms. Uh, or less. Yeah, some so, months like four or five. The yeah, that's because on that spot. That's the ratatouille liner, but we also have a ratatouille spatula. I don't know if you can see that or not. But oh, I have that. I have one of those. I, I, yeah, I love so it. So I'm just scraping down the edges of the bowl to make sure that I've incorporated all of the flour into the mixture. Why is it brown? It was a cup of brown sugar? Yep. Golden brown sugar? Yep. Okay. Cup brown, gold, golden brown sugar, a cup of sugar. You know what? Vanilla's in here. The now, I have a question. Yes. So, would you, you think it, it would be advantageous to add any lemon zest to this, or is the lemon extract yes. enough? And if you don't have lemon extract for whatever reason, <laughs> could you put in lemon zest? I would say yes. I would say yes. I would, again, this is the first time we use this recipe. This is from the studios from the 50s or the 60s. I would probably modify it because... Well, it does smell like lemon. But we use the doTERRA natural oils. You can do extract. Uh, Dory Greenspan is an amazing baker out there in the world. Uh, if you type in Dory Greenspan, D-O-R-E, 
she did a technique that is mind blowing is where when you have sh any type of sugar and you have a zest, put your sugar in your zest separately before you mix everything together and you massage the zest, either orange or lemon with and the sugar, oils. The oils. then you dump, you just don't grade your zest and then cook right. it. That enhances and it releases the oil and then you get that high in lemony. Um, That's excellent I, advice. So if you have fresh lemon, massage it with the brown sugar because this is what uh, your type of sugar yep. needs something coarse do you want to scoop those in now into the pan and you Cindy the says, i am so grateful for the instant pot recipe we are trying it soon that's oh, awesome Cynthia. wonderful 350 350 yes okay we did you have to do your oven at 350 which is very moderate um and they say three quarters high so um i'm not messy so i'm gonna He's getting. He's gonna get a scoop. I use that too. It makes sure that every um, cupcake paper holder gets the right amount. You, exactly. So they're all the same. Yep. Exactly. And then once these are in the oven, they'll bake for twenty-four to twenty-eight minutes. During that time, we'll also make a glaze, or we can put the biscuits. These were. These, I did wash those. I love my scoops. So this one is roughly. You know, you can do it's, it. It's a very loose batter. It's very loose. So they say three quarters of a cup. Can you move it closer to the overhead camera? There okay. you go. So that's about three quarters. Uh, I can only go so much. Yeah, yeah no worries. There you go. Let me hold this for you. It's very loose. It's a very loose batter. It's so we're hopeful that this will work out the way they say it is. Yeah. Because we've never tried this recipe. It's okay. That's okay. That's how all my recipes go on my show. So you're, you're in good company. <laughs> so, yeah, we're talking. This is oozy doozy here. Three quarters of a cup. Okay. Okay. So are there any other questions that people have? Oh, this was... Yeah, yes, if you have any questions for PTV or for me... Um, yeah, put them in the chat. Hi, Amy Baranowski. Welcome in. Okay, this is looking pretty good, Doug. Plop. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, this is a really No, I'm a little surprised. It's it's a it's a little bit more brown than I thought it would be. Is that because of the vanilla and the brown sugar? Yeah, uh, yes, it is. The brown okay. sugar really. I mean, oh, the Instapot. Did is, you use a uh, light or dark brown sugar? We used a golden brown or a light brown sugar. Well, That's what I used too. Yep. It's golden brown sugar packed, but I mean, it's. I bet they'll lighten up when they bake, though. And how much oh. flour was in this? It was a cup and a half, I believe, of flour. And we still have the chunks of one and a half cups. Yeah, this is going to make more than 12. Yeah. That's a big fat lie. Well, the rest of the, what it says, it actually calls for 12, but it calls for a larger square muffin pan, but I don't have a square muffin pan. Well, they did. They, not a lot yeah, of people have. I, those are kind of rare. I mean, I don't see those just, you know, out there available just, all the time. Okay, I'm okay. just going to put a little bit here. We are going to uh, cook this first before I add another one. Let me get this off here because I. It's been driving mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise it could make a, a mess when it's baking. And yes, I do that too. I always go around the rim with with a damp uh, paper towel or cloth. Yep. Because it gets crunchy and a mess. It does, and then the paper sticks, and it's a whole mess. It's a whole. I thing. totally relate to that. No, do you want? Oh, you want so Kathy has a question. Okay. Let's see, she has a family member allergic to bell peppers. Is there something she could substitute in the chili for that, or should she just leave it out? Leave it out. It's you not going to buy you out, anything. What about celery? Like, would celery could, work? Um, celery would work, but you could also add like a poblano pepper well, instead of bell pepper. If it could be. I mean, if they're allergic to peppers altogether, then I would yeah. say just eliminate bell peppers. Uh, I just think you live, eliminate the bell pepper completely. Yeah, it's not gonna bite. But, taking it out, you wouldn't even know because but, it gets uh, so soft. A poblano or an Anaheim pepper will work too. 
It just, I, I think because it was bell pepper, it's so old fashioned that they put yeah. it in. I don't think you'd even need it. Mm -hmm. But it was there. Uh, One little spot, and then we'll go ahead and put this in the oven when it reaches 350. It's just about 350. I'm mildly impressed. Okay. Okay. I mean, there we go. Let me get to see. So, can can you see this, Ben? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Little, little closer. There you go. Right? Okay. See, so, by using the scoop, look how even those came out, everybody. Yeah. So all of them are filled with the same exact amount. It's it's important for consistency, especially when you're baking. Baking is a science. Yes. It's not like cooking, like the chili, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You're not going to ruin the recipe, but with baking, it's a science and you could throw Agreed. up a whole balance yeah. it's, it's if you don't do it just right. So we're just getting it up. And when you do preheat your oven and you still, we have an electric oven. So mm -hmm. depends on gas. Always wait for your electric. Just because it goes beep, 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 I'm at 350. You should have an oven thermometer to actually see it. But you want the element to actually not be orange anymore. So just because it beeped, wait, I would say another few more minutes to actually regulate to the heat. That's a, a science to electric ovens to bake. Right. Um, because you're still that uh, that element is so screaming hot that it can actually start cooking your stuff at not a, a regular temperature. So I always look down and I'm like, okay, it's not orange anymore just because of beef. <laughs> Megan I'm says like, that Doug makes cooking into a science too. Well, I, I love it. I love it. And I do too. It's, it's just something piece. about, but there's also times I like to be taken care of and I like to go to a restaurant, but then lately it's getting harder and harder to eat out. So the instant pot finished doing its cooking, but because it is uh, 30 minutes of cooking and then 15 minutes of natural release, it's only four minutes into the finishing of its of its natural release. And do you guys want to explain the difference between a quick and natural release? Oh, sure. In this case, let me go ahead and change the camera so that we've got Sure. And off. just um, <laughs> one quick thing. Um, Disney World Castle says she loves her apron. Oh, this was uh, opening when we went to opening to Disneyland back in April 30th of last year. Um, this was at... Wonder Gland, Wonderland Gallery. I think it was Wonder Wonder, 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 Wonder yeah. Wonder so Ground. Wonder Ground. It's there on our downtown Disney, mm -hmm. and it's only there. And uh, I don't think they sell it anymore. But it's tiki. It's embroidered with Jose. Didn't I Megan love it? it? Yeah, we bought two of them because you know Megan had to have one. But you know, pay <laughs> honor. the thing about it, it's so super cute. If you guys can see it, that's a Dole it's Whip. It's adorable. I love it. See the Dole Whip? If you guys can see it. I love yeah. it. It's so cute. So yeah, this kind of has the that right there is Maui from the Polynesian. I love the tiki so room though. It's the it's whole. So I, I think Adventureland and well, I'm also just a purist. I'm a New Orleans Square kind of person. But that's okay. My so thing. The Instant Pot has uh, this vent right here. Mm -hmm. This vent. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of the no, speed. no, no, no! Don't. don't um, no, it's okay. already on camera. This vent is oh, actually the where the steam comes through. Right now, it's fully cooked, so it has finished this thing. It turns off, net, and then it just starts its natural release. Now, what I mean by natural release is that it's finished cooking. It's not actively cooking anymore. It's just keeping it warm. When you do natural release, you just follow the clock of the front of the Instant Pot. When it hits the number that you're done with the Instant, with the uh, natural release, then you press this button on this particular model and it starts to release the pressure. This little silver thing that you see here, that's the pin. When the pin drops, that means it is safe to open the pot because the pressure has been fully released. And it won't open if that's not down. No, it won't. It won't. Yeah, you... Uh, it's a safety, no. too. It won't open unless that pin is down. And the pin will only go down if all the pressure has been released. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and Megan says, I mean, have you seen this apron? How could I not want it? Isn't that like <laughs> the coolest thing? It was like, I, I went Thursday night, we went to downtown Disney first, met another YouTuber called Enchanta Rita. She's cute as oh, well. Oh, I love Rita. So, we met so her sweet. for the first time. We hung out. 
And it was just like, we got so close up to Disneyland knowing in a few hours it was going to be open and we were going to be part of it. You got all emotional. And then there was a bunch of other people hanging out in the Esplanade looking at the entrance of Disneyland. And all of a sudden the train goes by and it goes ding, 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 ding. And everybody's bursting into tears. Aww. It was the weirdest feeling. Like, Because ah, they were just opening. It was just an incredible experience. I was so grateful I got the... No, Doug, Diana Murphy would like to know how you keep your pan so shiny and clean. Me? That's actually a very good question. Pans? Yes. Okay. You mean this little five ply stainless steel? Why it's perfectly? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll show the camera. Okay. Look at the inside there. Uh, shut, yeah, there you go. Show, so the, the line that, yeah. There you go. It's line gorgeous. Line. Okay. These are 13 years old. I mean, they have its thing. Oh, but yeah. you know how you do rice or pasta, and all of a sudden you see that little rainbow you, you cook? And you're like, you see yes. the little outline of it? I well, to make these brand new, <laughs> these are incredible. This is the best cleaner on the planet. I use that. <laughs> Only the powder. I did the yep. liquid. The liquid is horrible. Um, you know what I use the liquid for? I clean my stovetop with it. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. But I use I use that. I use the powder to clean my sinks and to clean my pans. Yep. Uh, Diana, the cupcake tin is the same thing. Barkeeper's friend. Yeah, the cupcake. Um, that's shiny. There's nonstick. There's, you know, mm -hmm. every muffin thing. This was for 25 minutes. We'll see how this works. Now, Doug, is the barkeeper's friend safe for nonstick as well? No. no, you do not want to use it. It's only for stainless steel. Only it actually for stainless steel. Yeah. Okay, steel. got it. Don't do Teflon. I'm kind of moving away. I got rid of all my Teflon. Not that I had a lot. I have three. Mm -hmm. And I got and did massive research, and I love this stuff. This is green pan. It's that. I love green pan. It. Yes. So this stuff is that nonstick surface. It's Green pan. Mm -hmm. Green pan is awesome. So no more Teflon for me. Bye bye. Yep. Eventually. Now, Teflon... What about your Le Creuset? Can you? I don't think can you use that on the Le Creuset, uh -huh. the barkeeper's friend. You can. It gets if it gets pretty crody. I'm not the this one. I use for everything. This one I don't use. Barkeeper's friend. This one I use for everything. This oh yeah yeah. I have that pan. I have that same exact pan. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do, Donna. This one I don't. Donna, we, gets... truly are, we are truly kindred spirits. I know. Why are you in Florida? <laughs> um, this sometimes gets, I mean, it's they're enameled. It's enamel cast. Metal. Right. It gets like, I, you know, this crud does kind of get into it. Yeah. I just use a Mr. Yeah. Clean Magic Eraser. And it just takes I all use the that off. too. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, we have the same cleaning secrets. I love it. I know. <laughs> Cleanliness is next to godliness. Yes. Yeah. And if you can't that. find Barkeeper's Friend at your local supermarket or at Home Depot or anything like that, no. they do have it on Amazon. And Target. It's so cheap. It's like that yeah. little round thing. It really thing. is. It's very affordable. It's like two bucks. I mean, it is hideously cheap. But it's... um. Wear gloves if you're going to use it a lot because you should not have this on your skin. It actually dries out your skin, the powder. Yeah. Um, it's almost. I use gloves. Yeah. Wear latex gloves. I had a, mm -hmm. I was going through a cleaning frenzy and I just wasn't thinking and I used so much of it. Oh, it was through the barbecue. And my hands were raw and gross. Uh... And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's um the active ingredient is. Yeah, I Doug's can't. not wearing his glasses. What's the active ingredient? Um, find it. It's not boric acid, but um, that's what I use to kill ants. Mm -hmm. Oh, not the ants. No, no. <laughs> Diatomaceous earth? Diatomaceous oh. earth is, uh, well, you can eat that. It just kills. Kathy up. Hollister says she uses baking soda in an old Parmesan cheese container. And she uses the back scrubber side of her sponge. That's a good idea. Yeah. Oxalic acid and uh, benisulfonic acid. It, it's a, it's literally an acid. Just 
it takes away all kinds of sin Benzies and cleans yeah. everything. And it's really yeah. made for copper pots and copper pans. Yes. Yes. It and is. Uh, Should we work on the glaze for the uh, tea cakes first? Um, or do you want to work? On I want to the see these to come out. We have, mm -hmm. we can chit chat. And Jennifer right. Piccolo says she scrubs her cast iron with lemon, salt, and hot water. Well, I, cast iron is perfect for cast iron. Well, yeah. Cast enamel, like we say. No, just cast iron. Oh, yeah. You yeah, for strict normal. cast iron. Yeah. What I used one time was half of a lemon and tons of kosher salt because salt's cheap. Yeah. And I needed to get rid of some of the abrasiveness. It was something that I could not clean. So I just got the lemon and the salt and I screwed it around it. And I just got like a scrub brush that's made by Lodge. And I scrubbed it like crazy. And then, you know, you don't mind having no, some burnt on chunks because it's food. Shen, that's good to know. She says that she can find barkeeper's friend at TJ Maxx. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I've that's seen great. it everywhere. Okay. Um, 19 minutes. We can start do on, you the work on the glaze or the biscuits first. Let's. Because uh, that's all that's left. Let's do the biscuits. The glaze, I might. Um, wait the glaze on. can be done while the other thing is baking. So that way. Right. We'll yeah. And if this. Time. I don't want to waste the glaze to have it if this turns out to be an epic fail. Okay. You know, yeah. I'm, so the sweet potato rosemary biscuits are a biscuit from the Blue Bayou restaurant, which is at Disneyland in North Where's Square. You will find it. Aha. You will find the restaurant on the shore of the bayou inside Pirates of the Caribbean. It's a great atmosphere. It's perpetual night, and there are actual fireflies flying around on the outskirts along the river as you're floating through the bayou. Uh, by, uh, parts of the Caribbean. So this restaurant is, uh, gosh, it opened in 1967 and uh, along with the attraction and it's very, it's actually limited seating. There is not, it's not a huge restaurant. If I think about Disneyland, even the Carnation Cafe, Blue Bayou, Club 33, the places are tiny. It's like a huge oversized living room. That's basically the size of it. Everything is so, so small, but it's very intimate for a reason because it's just a size thing, but that's what makes it so quaint and so amazing. So the Blue Bayou is tiny. It is. It, but it's, that, but the intimacy is what you want, and that's what people like. That's why it's really, really, really hard to get an invitation because they don't crank out tons of people. It's not meant for that. Who that, Dave? Oh, boy. Do I know all about Diatomaceous Earth? Uh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It just it when when their insects or whatever are passing over diatomaceous earth, it actually cuts their exoskeleton and they dehydrate. Mm, their yummy yeah. exoskeleton. So I took a sweet potato or yam, roasted it, and I mashed it up and they wanted two-thirds cup. This is in another book that it plopped out. So I'm sorry, I can't get beyond the exoskeleton comment. Oh, and welcome back in, the Aaron. Exoskeleton right? Maria Shriver. Welcome back, Aaron. So sweet potatoes, rosemary. Now we normally have fresh rosemary. We're gonna be doing all of our herbs, but we just bought it in bulk. The scale at the cash register wouldn't register this. So the gal who had to was checking this out, she charged us two pennies for this. Oh my God. So buy your yourself, yeah. use a little bit and constantly go fresh. Don't buy like, look, six pounds of nutmeg. If you're going to go through six pounds in a week, but yeah. Um, yeah, it smells like it, but this only needs like a half a, a tablespoon. So what's a half a tablespoon? A uh, half tablespoon. There's uh, two teaspoons. Uh, one and a half teaspoons. It's half a tablespoon. I prefer to use, where's my, <laughs> I prefer to use fresh, but you know. Oh. Now, if you, for some reason, cannot come across fresh rosemary, can you use in a pinch the jar crushed dried? This is what I'm using is dry. Yeah. It was yeah. from the bulk because I, our plant, we had to rip out because it was weird. Right. Rusted. And we're going to be growing our French thyme, regular thyme, lavender, and rosemary. Yeah, I'm so. going to be doing the same kind of thing. Someone was so generous and gifted me a, an arrow garden. 
Um, and I'm going to grow all kinds of herbs in there. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful, Di uh, Donna. Diana, thank These you so have much. No smell to them. Diana says that cooking, cleaning tips, fun facts, jam packed fun show. Thank oh. you. This idea was brilliant. Diana, thank yeah. you so much. We are so happy to be working with D Donna for Dinners with Donna. This is a fun takeover. A oh, lot. it is. I, I, I mean, first of all, we just gel together. It's, it's like we could just trade shows because we're, we do, we think the same way. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. I, the thing yeah. is that truthfully, Donna is like our long lost sister. Yeah. How, yeah. you know, kinship and. That's such an honor. Thank you so I much. Really, you know, you <laughs> call. The honor is ours, really. Um, I know we haven't physically met, but you know how you have the chosen family where you just connect yeah. even on a distance, you know, you're born with the family. Can't get out of that. That's your family family. You just, yes. do that. but then you have your chosen family, the one you want to choose to be around with. Yep. I do feel that with you. And I know it oh, came absolutely. through technology. I have a very short list of chosen family. Cause I'm, I'm like, you. I have trust issues and things. So, <laughs> so it's very short and you guys are in that list. So yeah, you mean the world to me, honestly. Thank you. Donna, you say you're like a, a long lost sister of ours and all that, but I don't know that I would want to be hit by you like I'm hit by Sherry every week. <laughs> no. I'll leave the hitting to Sherry. <laughs> I'll just be the gentle, um, you know, one that picks on you from time uh, to time. Donna, <laughs> can you highlight Jeffrey Pop again? On oh, Sunday? sure. He said, when we were in California, we saw rosemary just growing like a shrub everywhere. I was so landscape. jealous of all the citrus and produce. Oh, wow. It's true. We actually use rosemary for uh, decorative shrubs in it, our yards. All uh, the housing really? track. Really? That That's have, amazing. The housing track that I came from, every house, just the number one main plant that was everywhere was rosemary. Maybe. I wonder if it doesn't do too well where I am because of the tropical weather we have because it's yes. 100 degrees most of the year. from Getty Mom. She says, Ben Protection Fund Starter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. That's very sweet That's of you. That's hilarious. Cynthia. I promise I won't hurt him when I meet him. <laughs> When Megan lived in Oakland near us, uh, their house also had rosemary growing in a planter in front of their house. Oh, they how large, wonderful. Large plants. When I lived in New England growing up, I remember that people would have rosemary there. Um, but I know here in Florida, you never see it like growing outside. It, it's just too warm and um, dry, I think. Yeah. Now, Doug just added the cheese to this particular They say recipe. a third of a cup, but, uh, you know, that was not going to happen. I put more of a half. And but that's yeah. cheddar. Is that sharp cheddar or just regular cheddar? <laughs> that is actually sharp cheddar from Costco. Ooh, so we, I was a, a big Tillamook fan, and all of a sudden Costco got rid of their Tillamook brand <gasps> and in our area. So I pouted. Yeah. And I like their extra sharp that came in a mm -hmm. red wrapper. And... It disappeared and disappeared. I tried the grocery store brand. I hated it. Yeah. So Costco, I like a lot of Kirkland, almost everything Kirkland. I think yeah. it is, is they probably worked with Tillamook. But I actually like this better than Tillamook. It's not as oily. Oh, and nice. It's better than Tillamook. I, I, this stuff is superior. Okay, that's very interesting. Yeah. That's I good to know. That. I'm making a note of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, we, we recommend... The uh, sharp cheddar cheese from Costco. Yeah, from Kirkland, Kirkland brand Kirkland because I Kirkland. wasn't happy. And now this particular thing uh, is uh, the two and a quarter cups of pancake mix. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use anything like uh, biscuit. So like biscuit, yeah. yeah exactly. Like now we crusties, make crusties. crusties. We make I make my own pancake mix. Or my own pancakes from my own batter from a King Arthur flour or King Arthur baking, whoever they're now. Oh, them? they make the they have the best flour. They do. they have the best flour. It's all I use. It's unbleached. Yeah. But their recipe to make pancakes from buttermilk is far more superior than Bisquick. I'm a oh, yeah. I grew up a Bisquick. There's nothing wrong with it. It is a it's incredible. But mm -hmm. for this, I didn't know the and I wanted to keep with authenticity and because it's a restaurant. They used baking mix. They were not cute and added all these ingredients. Again, they're right. cranking these things out. 
Because this was set when you sat at your table, they gave you these biscuits at the Blue Bayou. Right. So I uh, bought this quick. And they have it at our grocery store. We have a great selection of bulk, very high end quality. Bob's Red Mill, real stuff that you see, you buy in the package for a fraction. Oh, the good of stuff. So this is Bisquick. And they just took it out and plopped it in it. So instead of that buying this so quick, nice. yeah, I didn't want to buy this. We don't have so that here. The bulk, oh. the bulk aisle at our local oh, man. store is our, but our favorite section. The thing store. is, is incredible. I love that. What a so, great I, way to get that. So we're just like pancake mix. So it's two and a quarter cups of pancake mix. Really? I got a And I didn't measure it out. That's just what I bought from the bulk aisle. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. She says, so glad you are back, Donna. I've missed my relaxing Sunday dinners with Donna. <laughs> I'm watching you guys on our TV, such a delight, so enjoyable. Oh, I'm Stephanie. so glad you're enjoying thank that. Thank you. PTV are awesome. I love them so much. <laughs> okay. I, I Your you. pleasantries is very flattering. I'm not, I got to tell you this. An ben, introvert right here doesn't take acclamations really well. Ben just made me excited because you're your audience has started to subscribe to our channel. Oh, it, don't worry. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad. You guys won't be disappointed. Every Monday night, 9.30 and Thursdays at, is it 10 a.m. Eastern? Yes. That Life with Ten is released, and you will not be disappointed. You are in for such a treat. Was that two cups of the um, two and a quarter cups? I thought it was one and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Yeah, really? Yeah, two and a quarter cups of the sure Sure, I thought it was yeah. one and a quarter. And uh, but yeah, so we just hit a milestone of uh, 1950. I think you said 1950 subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we call we don't refer to the people that follow us as subscribers. We follow them. We have, we refer to all of our village as villagers. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Really? It is two and a quarter. Okay, that's yes. a big so what, I've never and Cynthia, yes, I, I did indeed turn in my Hallmark list, and um, it's quite lengthy. <laughs> yeah, this coming Thursday's episode of Life with Ben shows Sherry and I going to the Hallmark store to turn in our wish list. This oh, week. that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of right. Other than getting in the ornaments, July is my best month. Oh yeah. <laughs> Birthday month, fourth of July. It's Hallmark month. It's everything. I know. Another fellow July uh, born person. Yeah, yep. we love it. Birthdays <laughs> in July are awesome. Oh, okay. So the egg and a little bit of milk. <laughs> Mix egg and milk on the bowl. Oh, and you top it as a wash. Yeah. The egg okay. and the milk of the of, of the wash. Oh, oops. Okay. It's supposed to be 15, 20 minutes. I'm turning this on. I forgot to take out the pressure. Oops. Not that it was going to hurt, but here I go. Oh, that's a good question, actually. So if you forget like that, is it okay to let it just go naturally? Like, I, is to be yeah. honest with you, I've done it a couple of times, especially something like this. Mm -hmm. I just want, you know, you could have totally the naturally release. It just would slowly just the pressure. Right. Down. I waited to exactly, I said 15 minutes was the last time. Mm -hmm. I did another 25, I think 30 minutes cooking, 30 minutes natural release, a good hour. And mm -hmm. rice the meat, I think, is better. So change the recipe to um, okay. 30 so minutes. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt the recipe at all. No, all it is is just going to tenderize. Now, because we're cooking an instant pot and the beans, mm -hmm. we could do that. Now, if, gotcha. this one, if you're simmering it on the stove or in the crock pot, always put all the beans the last hour. Half yeah. Hour. Yeah, because they turn, they disintegrate. Yeah, but because we're cooking it so quick in the in, quick in the instant pot, the bin, beans don't have time to explode and disintegrate. That's but right. yeah, I wouldn't do it too long. But mm -hmm. do not put the, the beans in it if you're doing it in the crock pot or on the stove top. But we're gonna wait for this to be done, and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. Oh, in the meantime, like I'm gonna go ahead and respond to Jeffrey Pop. He says, "What is the hallmark list to get ornaments?" Yes. Oh gosh. When we are ready. <laughs> And the release was in April. We did a live stream on our show of us picking what ornaments we wanted to add to our wish list. You One of my favorite shows of the whole year, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we then take that wish list and we take it down to our local Hallmark store and we give it to them. They then prepare that list for us when the ornaments are released in July and we can go pick them up at that time. Some of the ornaments are also available in October and then more in November. Drum roll. So forth. 
Sorry, sorry, you're home. Oh, yeah, there it is. General, can you guys I, see this? Actually, I don't have it, but uh, I do have a suspense. So I that. Oh, I love that. Here we go. And there we are. Oh, oh look oh, at look that. Oh, look at that. Chili. Oh, my. So I swabbed mine. And you see this little side thing? That's where the lid goes. Yeah. <laughs> The lid people just don't sits know. on the handle. It's wonderful. So let's give it. <laughs> Cynthia let's... wants to know if she needs to do another petition. Uh, for how many trees? <laughs> we're already planning on doing 30. <laughs> it's uh that, that's looking pretty darn good. It looks it looks so good. Oh my goodness. And then Kathy had it's said cute. that King Arthur flower is what I grew up using. It's all my grandma would use. I also love Bob's Red Mill Organic Oats. Oh, the Bob's oh. Oats are great. Yeah, they're really great. Oh, it's, yeah, you know what? smell -O vision would be wonderful. Happy's Haunt, because I'll tell you, it smells great right now. So it is. And Cynthia says 30 at least. Okay. That's a promise. We will do at least 30 trees. Well, <laughs> we have ideas. We were talking about we can. Yeah. You know, I can't we, hear, wait. we hear people lately, it's like, I'm downsizing, I'm eliminating. Though it seems like all we're doing is growing. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Now, the is is growing. Growing. <laughs> so I would turn this off, unplug it, and technically it's done. It's, it's done. Go. I would probably barely keep it off to the side. Yeah. Because it's literally hotter than Hades right now. Oof. So um Sweet potato biscuits, the mashed potato, the sweet mashed potatoes, the rosemary that I think doesn't have any smell to it. <laughs> Gotta wash out with rosemary. It can actually taste like pine with it's fresh. Mm -hmm. But this actually had no smell. And uh, I bet about a half a cup of cheddar cheese. More cheese, the better. Why not? Two and a quarter cups of pancake, pancake mix. mix or AKA Bisquick and two thirds cup of buttermilk. And that buttermilk is just going on in. Let's see if I can do if this one works. There's that camera angle there. Can Doug, yeah, on the counter over here, the camera's right here to the side. Maybe you can show a little bit closer, Ben. Yeah. What's going on there? There we go. We're just moistening up it up. Um, dough will be sticky. And now, just to combine the buttermilk so you don't want to mix it too much, then Come on. And yes, Kathy, I always, oh, I always put it on my Oh, I made a mess. Oh, gosh. gosh. Look, it didn't even come out. There is. But yeah, Kathy, it, it's a great tip about where, how you can put mm -hmm. the lid on your instant pop there. A lot of people don't know that tip. And it's it's a simple one. And it's a good one, too, because all that the liquid kind of condenses on the underside of the lid, too. So you can put it in the handle and it won't drip all over the place. Or back into your food. Right. Okay, I heard beep. So the tea cakes are just about done? Yeah, they look weird. I don't know people. Well, the, the seconds are counting down on the uh, clock on the Yeah, oven. I'm not, I'm not. We're, we're a little concerned about the recipe. We had never tried that before, so we're hoping that the recipe does turn out the way uh, it says it will. Okay, this so looks pretty cool, you know. Okay. It's not an exact recipe from it, but the book says that these cupcakes have achieved mythical status in Southern California for nearly a century. Fans flock to Martino's Bakery and buy them by the dozens. In 1994, the new owners inherited the secret. Did you recipe. add the egg? Oh, no, the, the egg is not added to the biscuit. Oh, okay. It's just an egg wash. Gotcha. Okay. Donna, can you explain what an egg wash is? Oh, sure. So an egg wash is just simply, usually just an egg that you beat well. And sometimes you can mix it with a little bit of water. It depends. And you use a um, little like basting brush, a silicone or whatever to uh, brush the tops of your biscuits. And it gives it a nice sheen. And they, it really does. How, how mm -hmm. are, the, are those? Nice are and glossy. Cakes. Um, I'm worthy. They need to go in for another three to five more minutes. Okay, they're yeah. kind of weird. The recipe did say it was 28, a, 28 to 32 minutes. So, yeah. Yeah. 
They and everyone's are, uh, oven is different as well. So yes, I need to buy a new thermometer for our oven. They're like less than mm -hmm. ten bucks because you want. Oh, and that's sure. another thing you should tell them about that, Doug. How you need to calibrate your oven every so often. Yeah, ovens just like anything eventually just start getting tired. Our bones, our bodies are for one thing. Machines and are just like that. Eventually, on and off, on and off, on and off, and how much expensive things in they do eventually crap out. Yeah. Uh, you always want to have a thumb. Uh, sometimes you get two. You put one in the front and one in the back of an oven thermometer to make sure what you say is a 350 is roughly what it is. You want to bake on average between 10 to 15 degrees difference than what it says. And every oven fluctuates. They get really hot. Some ovens have hot spots where toward the back, right hand corner, just everything burns. Why is those three cookies always on the cookie sheet? Burns quickly or cooks different because that area gets hotter because it's just the way the element, just the way the gas, if you have a gas stove, mm -hmm. uh, everything just gets uh, warmed up. So generally the, the, the degrees is between 10 to 15 degrees is where you want to be, um, but you want to fluctuate it. So you want to bake at most as precise as you can, especially with baking. Baking in a gas oven produces more humidity. So if you want to do a lot of baked goods, cakes that's dry, you have to compensate or think about why is my scones always moist, which they should be a little dry. It's because you're probably cooking in a gas oven and gas ovens, actually natural gas creates humidity. Where if you cook in a normal electric oven, which is just a heating element, that's called dry heat. Mm -hmm. So the stuff is people prefer to cook in dry confection heat. So if you have a convection oven, kudos. I bake on and off. Sometimes I bake a, a cake or cookies or whatever in a convection oven. Normally, I just bake. And mm -hmm. uh, standard. So our stove, when we picked, is called dual fuel. The top is all gas. So everything is gas because I think gas is controlled. But I think that's going to go away with the environment because um, a lot of places are not cooking with gas anymore because natural gas is actually bad for greenhouse. For whatever it is, it actually makes sense. But I love baking in dry heat at, in an, an electric oven. It's a preference. We do like a gas cooktop, though. But if we have to go all electric on the top, go for it. Because induction um, ovens are pretty incredible. So um, they're pretty cool. Now, with the, uh, the you already have everything in the mix for the biscuits? Yeah, I just need to clean up my mess. OK. And then you roll that up. Oops. Oops. Making too much noise. <laughs> um, it says three minutes, gonna start beeping and hissing at me. So again, the, the this is a listing of the ingredients in the biscuits. The directions are in the description of the video. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, and also on Donna's Facebook group. Correct. They are not puffy. Okay. Oh. Look at that. They are flat and they're perfect. Wow. Look they said that. it was supposed to be this, if you can, could believe can you it. Like, closer? Yeah, that's it. They're supposed go. to be golden brown and flat. So, so far, so good, you guys. Look at that. And that, that scoop, I really think, helped achieve that. I so. think so, too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let the other dough pass. Um, we're going to let those just go because I'm going to uh, turn around and bake these biscuits next. So, sure, we have extra batter. I'll deal with that later. So, it's incorporated. You don't want to beat it too much. Because so if you do, that makes a tough dough, doesn't it? Yeah, right. you don't want to eat bricks. You don't want to get too much. So mm -hmm. flour, flour, rolling pin, flour. Where's flour? Flour. Um, so you want to roll these out. And where's my baking sheet? Cookie sheet. Cookie Help sheet. with that. And parchment paper. Okay. I'll get the paper. And rolling pin. Wow, I'm not doing real well. <laughs> this is an incredible, it's made by Sil Pen. This is a silicone rolling pin. Nice. Incredible. You still want to get it a little bit flourly, but I use this when we bake a lot of rolled cookies. This stuff is, this thing. Is, is it metal. weighted? It's metal. It's heavy. Yes, it's yeah. metal. It's, so it's got metal. some heft to it. It has, it's like a French rolling pin, but it's silicone. I love, 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 love this thing. Nice. So I'm going to do 
some flour. I know the surface is clean because I cleaned it. And I am prepping the parchment paper. You know what? I don't trust myself. Excuse me. Um, I'm going to wipe this down. Uh, where's the knife? Um, see one other oh, here. Here. Oh, here it is. Just to clean the knife for a second so I can cut the parchment paper. Oh, I bet you're a great baker, Cynthia. She says, I love baking, but I'm not as good as Donna and Doug. <laughs> oh, thank you, Cynthia. I've always been a big baker, to be honest with you. I prefer baking more than, um, I love cooking, you know, just, but there's yep. something about the baking, the creation, because it's going along with what I do. I'm a graphic designer, so I like the design, the creativity of it, and make something. And I think baking is one of those things. Back in 2005 or 2004 or 2006, the Food and Wine Festival at California Venture had a cooking school or a cooking class. It was pretty much all day at Napa Rose at the Grand California. Oh, wow. I signed up. There was only like 13 of us or 16 of us that could do, uh, and it was really hard. They, it was only this... Second year they did it, and I heard about the first year, and I said, I need to cook in the kitchen at Napa Rose. And Napa Rose is a five, four star, four star or five star Michelin, three star, three star Michelin, only the one in Orange County in California. Right. Very, very excellent. I love Napa Rose. And when you go there, it's a two, three hour. Don't think you're going to like eat and run. It's an experience because it's Napa yeah. Rose. It's leisurely, take it all in kind of thing. Yeah, it really so, is. Napa Rose is amazing. And I got to take a cooking school. We had our names embroidered. We have the chef's coat. I still have that coat to this day. Oh, and wonderful. Made, you should show that on one of your shows sometime. I have pictures I should bring up. I, we made the yeah. diver scallops um, and a couple other ingredients. And then we all sat in the, the, the dining room table and talked about it. Well, Andrew Sutton, who is now the executive chef at Carthay Circle, Club 33, and Napa Rose. He wow. much runs all the high-end restaurants there. Um, he was there. And even to this day, he knows me. If we happen to go to one of the restaurants, I'll ask if he's there. The sweet, 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 nice guy. And he talks about how don't, you know, this don't use this kind of Parmesan cheese that come with a craft can. He threw that. You know, he's very exaggerated. <laughs> you know, because he's a, he's a high-end chef. Right. He's a really, really nice guy. He there was... There for opening the Napa Rose and still there over 20 some odd years. Wow. So, you, so, so anyway, this dough, you just turn it out onto the counter. So I have my chef coat. So I told him, you know, we were talking about what kind of stuff we'd like to make. And I said, oh, I'm this. And he looked at me, he goes, oh, you're one of them. Bakers, they like to measure everything. And he berated me in you know, a very nice way because bakers like to, you know, precise. And he's a chef. He's a cook. They don't measure anything. But ooh, this is very moist. Yes. They said it like, very moist. It is super moist. Rosalie says you learn by doing. I agree. I, I think you do. And you know what? You're going to get discouraged from the first time. And you're like, I'm never going to do that again. I know that's hard. And you, you just have to try it again. Because it needs more flour. How much flour did they want? One tablespoon. <laughs> one tablespoon. About a tablespoon of flour on the floured surface. Gently fold the dough over itself three to four times using floured rolling pin, rolling the dough. This How man can is I? My hero. Um, um, Megan says, This man is my hero. Andrew um, Sutton. Here, can I have more? This is that very Megan comes from the frame of mind flour. of yeah. not measuring anything when she's cooking. Yeah. Baking, baking is a different beast. It is. is cooking. Oh, Megan just cooks. No, the flowers. Just, just, this Arnie is and Doug are big into measuring when it comes to cooking. I cook. I actually weigh and measure. I did something last night. I weighed even the romaine lettuce in our bowls. So we all had five ounces of romaine lettuce. I know it's like crazy. It's quite new. Yeah, this really, really. It's a very amazing. sticky dough. It's really Hi, Anthony. You will one day. I promise. <laughs> okay, so I'm rolling it out. And you, you fold it over on itself like three or four times. They say roll it. No, um, no, no. It says fold it over on its side. 
on itself. Yes. Then roll. Yeah, that's hours. how you do biscuits. Here. And then, yeah. over, and then again. And then over again. Okay. Yep. There you go. Crash down and then again. There yep. you go. Now let me give you a little more flour. Yeah. You know nice. what you're doing? You're making the flaky layers in the biscuit. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah, you're yeah, doing yeah. when you're folding it. You want some on your hands? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Megan is not incorrect with that. She gives Doug Tourette's when she cooks. She was here. We had we had like multiple Christmases because the way families have gotten big and and are in different locale. We had Christmas number okay. three. Now let's take the rolling pin and uh, we'll flour it up a bit and okay. we'll roll out the biscuits. I think this is fine. Yeah. Janie B asked a question. She said, "Could you sandwich the dough between no, parchment no, no, no. Oh. paper?" Yes, you can, but it might get a little sticky with that as well. So go ahead. Oh, wow. You really good. Now, do you think it's sticky because of the, like, because I know here with our humidity, I always end up using a whole lot more flour than I, my and, rest Yeah, exactly. it, it's a little hot and it's a little humid today. Yeah. See, this is, it's I, a sticky it's dough. It's a sticky dough. You know, pour some of that pancake batter. We're not screwing this up. I know we're not. It's just, this is like really super sticky. I'm just going to get a little bit. Yeah, you can kind of feel it, can't you? Yeah. You, you just, really can. You, just, mm -hmm. you know when it's right. But you don't want to make hard hockey pucks or... You know, no, you don't. Because this That's is... Nice. I'm going to do this and roll it out. And then we're just going to... It's very, it's very, very... Sticky. Very, very, very sticky. Yeah, it's a very sticky dough. So what am I going to do? Where's the parchment paper? It's I it. am going to do what I would normally do with my biscuits. I drop them. So I was going to ask if they're going to be drop biscuits. I'm going to drop them, people. I'm just going to kind of make a this little rolls. tennis ball. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tennis ball it and just kind of give it a drop. There you go. I'm like, this is not working. It could be your humidity. It can mean the type of uh, buttermilk. That biscuit's a little mm -hmm. that is a, that, Even I can see that it's a little big, and I love biscuits. <laughs> this recipe is for 15 biscuits. Okay, this, I'll get them smaller. They, you know what? They actually look a little bit like the cheddar biscuits that you can get at Red Lobster. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the type of buttermilk. You know, every manufacturer makes their buttermilk a little bit different. Mm -hmm. It could be more water. Did you or... buy better milk or did you make your own? No, I actually we... bought it. Everybody, do you, Donna, do you want to explain a little food hack? How if you don't have buttermilk and you just need a cup, why buy a pint? You know you can make your own buttermilk. Yes, you, you can. A little... All you need is some um, milk and some vinegar. <laughs> yep. It's just an acid vinegar or also lemon juice. Yeah, Sherry did yep, that. Lemon juice will water. work as well. I, Sherry did that in front of me one time, and I said, what kind of voodoo is this? <laughs> you need to coagulate it, and it has to sit for about 10, 15 minutes, because you need to coagulate the... Or you can actually you know, see it changing. Yeah, you can. It's, the, it's uh -huh. a weird thing. It's just the last... It's fun to do with kids. <laughs> They're like, whoa, what is this? It's like science in the kitchen. It is. Yeah. It's so much fun. But if you know you're going to use, oh, I have a recipe for this. I'm going to make pancakes for that because that's about two cups. And, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to do that. You know, just buy it because it's only like, you know, two something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. When I find at my store, I can buy it in like, just like a pint or something. So I don't have to, you know, buy a lot of it. Yeah. In our case, we had to buy a quart. Oh, Fortunately, wow. we had enough recipes that we were going to use that whole course. Kind of over here. Mm -hmm. Let's see, can they? Can you guys see this? So they're a little did big. You, did you do this, Cameron? Okay, thanks. They're a little big. A little, a little but we'll just put these in the oven. Okay. Um, again, these are rustic. Yes. That's what we call baking when they're not exactly. Now, you can do an egg wash. Are we going to do the egg wash? Oh on them? no, it's not. Gonna but happen. we will do some cracked pepper on them. Yeah, uh, let me do some cracked pepper. Oh, God. That's they do call for an egg wash, but in this case, I don't think we're going to. They're already somewhat rustic. So uh, as soon as uh, 
Yeah, I don't Kathy want to says, I think they will be so good. I might have to make biscuits tonight. Warm biscuits with butter. Oh my gosh, I love warm biscuits with butter. And Janie says that she watched a video the other day making mozzarella from scratch and she may try it. You should. Making mozzarella from scratch is so much fun and it's not that hard. No, you just have to find the rennet. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a 450. Wow, it's hot. Your Pop agrees and says they, they think they will be delicious. I think yeah, we I all think are you unanimous. You want base biscuits to be flaky and white, not like a hockey puck. Yeah, you don't want them dense. That's for sure. No. Okay, these are gonna be peppery. That's fine. We like pepper. Now that's a lot of pepper. Yeah, that's a lot a of people don't like that much. We happen to like that much pepper. So now we just have to wait for the oven to warm up to 450, and then oh, we'll put it the in. That's the egg, right? Yes, for the egg wash. Oops. We're not. <laughs> We're not gonna do the egg wash. No. Yeah. Well, I think they're moist enough, and and yeah. I think. Yeah, with the stickiness, maybe the egg wash wouldn't be a good idea this time. I think so. I think you're right, Donna. So 450, it was already But streaming. you know what you could do at the end, and I don't know if that's in the recipe or not, but you could brush them with melted butter. Yes, you could. And give yeah. them up the shine. Um, you certainly could. Um, you know what? Let me see if I can. Let's oh. see if this works. Well, no, we don't have to do it now. We can do it after they're cooked. Oh, you want it after? After after the cook. I just want to try. Okay. Janie B likes the cracked pepper. Oh, I do too. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's going to bring out like the sweet potato because the sweet against the pepper, I think that's a good flavor combination. I, want this I one. think so too. Put a little swig of a little butter on it. I don't know. Yeah, he, it. I don't know if you can see it. Ben, do we have the camera up here? Right here, dug out of the butter a lot of butter so, to that particular so, so biscuit. Hot. So soft. So I want to see if it turns out. So we'll see. Yeah, see, my idea was um, putting the melted butter over them when they come out of the oven. That was when I, that's my thought too. Doug wanted to do it before. I wanted to do one. I wanted to be difficult. So he did one. <laughs> okay. You're not difficult, you're creative. Sure. I just wanted to see. We're going to take one once these goes in. We're going to take one, before I ice these uh, cupcakes, I want to actually cut it open to see the moisture and the taste first. I don't know we have to ice them. You know, we don't show how you ice them or anything. No, the recipe is there in the in the Facebook page, mm -hmm. the Facebook group. You'll see it. So oh, you know what you guys can do? And I do this, um, and it's totally optional, but I usually, after the show, take pictures of the finished products mm -hmm. and then I can post those in the Facebook group as well. We'll do that. We will take pictures and I'll make sure that we get pictures to you, Donna, of Wonderful. that we've made. I know everyone would love that. Including Ben's Tahitian punch. Yes. Because I'll tell you, okay. that was great. Okay. So, granite countertops, the best thing. When you do a kitchen, you could do Agreed. the Agreed. I love my granite. But, yeah, invest in great countertops. Just... A board and they stay cold, which is conducive for rolling out doughs and uh, pastries and things. Okay, yeah, so. that chili is looking delicious. Oh my that gosh. It does look chili-ish. It, it looks, looks amazing. Imagine so. garnishing it with a little sour cream, a little cheddar cheese, some onions, and some diced tomatoes on top. And you got a perfect chili ready to go. So and this crackers. Crackers. <laughs> this is more of like a reverie because this countertop is going to Oh, work. every kitchen needs one of those. I, I swear this, by mine. This is from the restaurant supply store. And yeah, then we just, we just scrape it right into the trash can. And I it's don't also have, great for dividing dough. Oh, yeah. You could use metal, but I don't want to scratch it. Yeah, yeah. It. But, yeah, now it's all flat and I can get the... Yeah. Look at that. Easy and peasy. This yeah. particular granite, I remember when we bought it, we bought a cleaner as well. It's not just a cleaner. It also seals the granite at the same time. This is That's Brazilian awesome. granite. Not that that, you know, okay. there was actually a story. Go ahead. Throw it in. Here we go. These are supposed to bake for 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do 12. I was going to say probably 12 to 15. Yeah. yeah, that's my thought too because they're so, yeah. so much bigger. Okay, than let's look half this thing. Is it's thickening? It's a little. You no, know, chili's kind of runny, right? Actually, this oh, looks yeah. it depends on the chili. Yeah, 
That actually looks a lot like the chili you get at Wendy's. Yeah, actually it does. Look at you that. Know? Let me go ahead. <gasps> oh my goodness. That it kind of has. Oh, so good. Yeah, it actually looks like Wendy's chili. Oh, Yum. that was all the sour cream and oh. Actually, it's thickening up well, letting it air out. But yeah, this little thing, a lot of people don't know. I swab my lid when it comes out because I let it rinse. Yeah. There's so much moisture. I let sit there and let all the water go in. And I lift it out and I just dry it. So that's why. I do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> then I just throw it over the side. And sometimes it doesn't get all crud. It's just moisture. I don't soak it. I just wipe it with uh, soap. But yeah. I got <laughs> again, I will text you. We will work on that. <laughs> Maybe I'll we'll do a takeover. <laughs> this has chili actually turned out good. Let me. Megan, if we can arrange that, I'll go up and be your sous chef. <laughs> okay, here I go. I love that. Let's try it. I don't want to should bring you, it wait, wait, shouldn't you use an, a, a, another spoon before you stick it back in? I'm going to wash this. All I right. do know. So everybody knows. I understand. All right. It's probably hot, like heat hot. You know, I blow it on. Wow, that's really okay. good. Okay. Wow. Imagine what it's going to taste like tomorrow. Oh yeah, I I oh, might. I'm gonna have a little bit with this and with the biscuits. That with the just, biscuits, because these oh have to be goodness So we're gonna have a little bowl. So now yeah, I'm gonna need a report on this tomorrow on tomorrow's episode of PTV. I, I where the next day chili is. This. I wish I can ship it. There will definitely be a report on PTV live tomorrow night. So yeah, excellent. We'll, we'll show all the food and. How it is, definitely. All right. I'm so, so right. excited. This is so amazing. All so the food is incredible. Mm -hmm. Don I can't Megan believe went. the perfection of the tea cakes, how they're all even. Oh, here, let me pop this out. Okay, here we go. It's beautiful. It's a work of art. Give me the right camera right here. Okay. They look. Uh -huh. Good. They're flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one out. And they're supposed to be I flat. I need to find more. So help me go on the Amazon. If you can help me find some more of these little wrappers. Okay, here we go. Cynthia says, overnight me a bowl, Arnie. I want to help judge. <laughs> and then Nicole, Happy's Haunt, says perfection. Oh, thank you, Nicole. They're very moist. They are very cooked. I mean, look at that. That looks great. They appealed. Yum. Here, give me a knife. I think it's just going to break apart. They're mm -hmm. very, it, it's very crunchy because it's all brown sugar, which is very odd. I bet they'll me. melt in your mouth. So it's all brown sugar. Let's take a half. Here we go. And with the icing, they're going to be just oh, perfect. Wow. They they can not do that. Incredible. You see, this is why this recipe has been so popular for over a hundred years. I mean, it's super moist. I mean, we're like, if they sat up, probably a little longer, because I mean, they're oh. still very warm. But and there's a hint of lemon right at the end. I the put both of uh, them. Actually, these are very good. This you want here? Yeah, I'm going to try this recipe. You want to try this amazing. recipe? It's odd because I saw it and I'm like, that's all it is, is brown sugar. Ooh. Now we'll go ahead and do the icing and then we'll post those pictures with Donna. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah, we'll definitely see those ben, on you the wanna, Facebook group. Um, the lemon is its very subtle, but sometimes I like very subtle lemony. Yeah. Extract, uh, essential oils. I won't try it just yet because I want to take some chili home and one of the tea cakes and a biscuit and I want to mm. have that for dinner tonight. Oh, that that will be done. Oh yum! And Sarah, Sarah's asking, "What is your Monday night live show called?" Oh, <laughs> PTV Live. It's called PTV Live. It's on our channel, Pepper Tree Villa, at nine thirty Eastern, six thirty Pacific. We're live every Monday night. We share cocktail recipes, food recipes, crafting, 
and uh, various other fun things. We do review of Hallmark movies. Trader Joe's, because we have yeah, a thing for Trader Joe's. That's true. We always check what's new at Trader Joe's as well. What's right? new at Trader Joe's? Yes, <laughs> that's exactly right. Do we have that here? No, we do not have that. Mm, I don't think well, he has it on his little hard drive. I, I do. Uh, oh, no, here. Let me show you. Oh, no, no, I don't. I don't. That's because I've got the little hard drive that needs to be on it, so I can't yeah. do it. Actually, oh, he you know, really you know, he's very jealous at the moment. He says, "How how is Richie going to taste everything? He's the official taste tester of the dinners with Donna channel. I'll have to fly him out to you guys. Uh, or, <laughs> Donna, maybe we can do. I'll loan him out for a day. <laughs> maybe we can do a show at your house sometime. I would love that. I would too. <laughs> I would love that. There's there's a little thing in October first. It's called Epcot's anniversary. <laughs> yeah. We were there for in 2002. We were at its 20th. And how we organized our next trip, trip we went was 2012. My first time to the Food and Wine Festival at Epcot was the 30th anniversary. Oh wow. So I'm overdue. I want to kind of keep this pattern that I never forced to do it. It just happened to be doing it. So we have grand fantasies, you know, how everything's mm -hmm. going in the world of like. I really want to be there for the 40th. I know they're not going to do anything real spectacular, but it's, yeah. I love Epcot. Out of all four of the parks, it's Epcot. It's my favorite. Epcot, hands down. That and Animal Kingdom, and I have to say, I'm not a real big fan of MGM. Not that it's not a bad park to us. It's just everything that's in California, and it's about California, and I don't yeah. want to go to somewhere where I can get it at home. Exactly. So I don't go to MGM Studios, and I call it MGM because that's when I go. I always go when it's MGM Hollywood. I've only been there once when it's called Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. But everything at Hollywood Studios or MGM is in California. Either yeah. At or it's like, why would you go all the way across the country to see something where you already have it? I don't. There's yeah. nothing there that I need to do repeatable. Ridiculous. Yeah. So, and I just think Animal Kingdom is spectacular. Um, but I love Epcot. Oh, I appreciate the Magic Kingdom for what it is, but mm -hmm. I'm a Disneyland person. I mean, I appreciate for what it is. I like Disneyland's but, Magic Kingdom much better than Disney World's. I'm sorry, everyone in the chat, but that's just my opinion. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> I don't want to start a fight. Magic, no, Kingdom is either. Magic Kingdom is great. I get it. Mm -hmm. But there is, they're, they're two different parks. I agree. And if I'm going to the Magic Kingdom, I'm a purist. Yeah, me too. Get, is Country Bear because unfortunately mm -hmm. we got a really bad Winnie the Pooh attraction. They took out Country Bear in California. People Mover, um, People Mover, Carousel of Progress, Hall yeah, Present. Hall of Those Present. are my favorites. Those, those, are, are, those are my favorites. <laughs> and then the other things we want to do, I still haven't done um, Mine Train because they were working on Mine Train. We were there in October oh. of 2012. They didn't open it until the following six months later. So I just want to see what that's all about. And I thought Toronto when it opened in Shanghai was spectacular. Mm -hmm. But I think if we have a great fantasy and somehow it rains money, um, this October 1st, I have a funny feeling that's when Toronto's going to open. Yeah. Because they're already doing the launching. Yeah, they're testing the cars. And, and stuff. Yep. the people who are reading Disney tea leaves are saying because of that time, they're doing that type of testing it looks like they're shooting, you know, quote, October 1st on the Now, 15th. I will say, when you guys plan your trip, you have to have a day set aside where you come to my house and we cook. Well, we were discussing that. We were going to see if your we, schedule we is appropriate. To. Oh, no, park. I will make the time. I don't <laughs> care. Well, You're in. You're, gonna fly You're already in. in. Uh, the parks, we do want to do a couple of the parks to spend a couple of days, but absolutely, we do, we do want to spend more time in Orlando and actually seeing people, yep. to be honest with you. So it's not just staying on property, but we were going to, it's something that we've always dis, uh, discussed that there's some people that we would, so I think we would spend more time outside of the parks than we would be in the park. You should check out the discuss. For sure. Wow. So Sam says that I can fly her out too. So now oh, my cool. whole family's deserting me for your kitchen. <laughs> and you're cooking and sam says that she loves disneyland more than mm -hmm. disney world and neil says no sam <laughs> i could probably do the match kingdom in maybe oh. less than half a day megan wants to head yeah. along to florida i i mean so really it's says, just 
Because you can walk on people movers, carousel of progress, country bear, pit president. I could pretty much stay in Tomorrowland and be happy and then head over. I like Haunted Mansion, but Disneyland's Haunted Mansion, I mean, come on. Oh, it is it. I mean, there's no contest. And um, yeah. The Sorry, thing I, Neil. I love about the Magic Kingdom that there's one little part, part of the park, I think it just makes me almost teary-eyed is Liberty Square because that exact placement of buildings, yeah, that was like, all that concept was 100% Walt. Walt yeah. had it on the shelf. He wanted to put it in Disneyland. That is Disneyland. Disneyland was supposed to have it. Yep. With Liberty Square. Yeah. Everything about it. I mean, the way the architecture, if you look at the plans for Disneyland, yeah, they put it in Florida. So to me, that's Disneyland, Disneyland, but it was timing. It was 1958. You know, mm -hmm. things are still not spectacular. I, I, I got it. So got I'm it. a Liberty Square person. I could spend my time. I love Liberty Territory Tavern. That's my only restaurant. Oh, I, I love, love that place. That. We should go to dinner there. Oh, I love that place. I got a thing here about Megan. She says she really wants to go to Epcot. The thing about Epcot, though, Megan, is that it's really, really big. And it's, it's like a mile around the lagoon. It is. That's why I can't go back for a while because I can't walk that far yet. <laughs> you'd be just like you'd be perfect with Megan then, Donna, because the two of you would be best of friends. Megan has tired blood. Oh yeah, she has TB. <laughs> Not tuberculosis. She has TB. I have TB at home. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we I was with my mom in two thousand, and we were you know spending the days. She's walking. She had uh, kind of screwed up her ankle. She fell downstairs in nineteen ninety. Oh dear. Or ninety four. And we went in 2000, so she just, you pretty much never recoup. Once you kind of like hurt your body, you're kind of always going to be owie for almost ever. So we were on like day two or wherever. It was our second day back to Epcot. She got right to World Showcase, where that store is. And she said, I can't. I, I can't walk anymore. It's just too big. So I said, stop. And then there's right there, there was the, I got her a wheelchair. Just a simple you know, they're like 20 bucks to get it back, or I don't know what, it didn't even matter what it was. And I pushed her around, it was great. <laughs> and we, had, we went right there was the front and they pushed us right in and we had reflections of her. And I think I'm a nighttime person. I like Disney after dark. I don't, I'll do rope drop, but I'm not happy. I'd rather sleep. I'm I like night. nighttime too. It's like I'm, when the magic happens, I think. Yeah, I'm a nighttime person. Now it got a little golden brown. Oh, oh I just want to interject for one moment and say, hi, Jason. Welcome in. So I got a little golden brown. I like that. I like that though. A little crunch. They do I not like look it. like the picture because I think they were supposed to be flat. They feel fluffy. That's a good thing. But these are the cheddar biscuits. Can you, um, I don't know. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Oh, he's just going to get a plate, get one of the biscuits off. Go. Which and Neil one? says Megan, it's a great place. It's their most favorite place in the world. It wasn't around this one. No, I think it was here. This one. This would be Nicole right. loves Disney That's After right. Dark. I'm an After Dark person, people. I Me love too. Disney After Dark. And so oh. is Janie. Janie says Disneyland at sunset and after dark. Oh, oh absolutely. There is it's they're two different things. So yeah. We got a little crunch. I love that. Out. A little crunchy exterior oh, and nice too. and soft and, and, and okay. Show the camera okay. Okay. Hold on one second. We've got the counter camera right over the chili. Oh, God. Great. Okay. There so we there, go. Look here. Let me go ahead, go ahead and I'll hold the plate you cut. So here we go. See what they're like. And that is true, Neil. He says, we live near Disney World. It has to be the best. <laughs> Because we're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> things are right out of the oven, so they're still steamy hot. They're very, very, very hot. Yeah. And, and really Cynthia hot. says she needs to be flown overnight for the uh, cooking at the house. Okay. Look at that. Look That'll at, work for me. Isn't this like, ooh, move, move a little closer. Look there, at that. There you go. Melt. Oh, that's beautiful. Butter. Now let's try okay. listening. Let's try butter. the test. Okay. This room butter. I agree, Megan. How hot it is in this kitchen. This butter got really melted. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll take a half and I'll take a half. Okay, here we go. Hold on. Hold what, on. Where are we? The proof is in the tasting. Mm. 
Wow. We can make these anytime. Ooh. Cow. Are these good? are delicious. Ben, you're Ooh. really going to enjoy Okay, I'm making those. Those are on my <laughs> yeah, list. Definitely. This is a must. I thought they bailed big time. This, but remember, the dough is going to be sticky, so be careful with it. You know, yeah. It might be right for them. It depends on, again, your buttermilk or the humidity. But look at that. The cheese. Yum. The pepper. Yeah, I could eat these all day long. They're delicious. They're all crunchy. Well, I'm Donna... Gonna... These are amazing. So we'll post a picture. This has been meld. This we'll post pictures home. on PTV, uh, Pepper Tree Villa, on, on Twitter, and we'll get them for you, Donna, as well, for your Facebook Perfect. group. Where it's posted with uh, recipes. Um, I think I want some more Tahitian Terrace Punch, too. Um, <laughs> so oh, we'll yeah, get that we'll on the biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> you want to just use these? Yeah. I'm just gonna use chili. Yeah, just so I'm just one yeah. little. So now we're gonna taste a little chili. These are little just oh the Pyrex, the typical Pyrex custard. Well, yeah, I think we all have okay. them. Actually, I think every almost every they're kitchen. They're so handy. Like I I like use them as prep bowls and things. Yeah. They're great. They're great for custards. A little bit. Ben, do you want to try some? I'll try it at home. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Let it air out. What's Thank the... you, Mikey, for posting the link. Oh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, Mike Wheeler's birthday is this coming Wednesday. Yeah. Yay, Mikey! Mike. We posted a video <clears throat> um, called Double Tap Tech Talk. Yes. I was very, I, it's been an honor to help him with his graphics. So that graphic, well, I, I didn't know you right did now. that. That's yeah, I designed awesome. his logo. I did all his thumbnail. <laughs> and I did, little, want, I did a little of the video editing for him, too. We want to help him because very cool. he's been. Such a supportive person for a lot of the channels, like oozing of giving. That I felt like it was my honor to do his thumbnail. So I did the thumbnail graphics. Please see those videos. Because for someone blind, he does more better blind than I could do having sight. So he's an incredible, wonderful, oh, wonderful guy. Oh my. This chili. This is really good. This is very good. Ben, you're gonna love this. I know. Oh, I tomorrow am. is uh oh. Donna. You got to make yeah. it. Oh, you oh make I'm it. going to. Yeah, definitely. This is a good one. So here's a little chunk of meat. Hold on. Let me let me, let me me zero in here. Oh, it's not that spicy. There we go. See how that, that's the, the stew meat? Yeah. And it, it has a lot of flavor without being too spicy. Yeah. I mean, it tastes like chili. It has well, just the chili. There you Get go. Get the that's, pensies. That's the, Walt. that's the Walt thing. And you can... And again, you can garnish it with a little cheese, a little sour mm. cream, some on onions, and diced tomatoes. This and then how does that pair with those cheddar biscuits? Mikey, I think I just posted the link to your video, but let me know if I posted the right one. <laughs> <laughs> he showed us the videos beforehand, and I my mouth is blown away. I mean, it was open, just like wow. You can't see, and he can work the computer better. And he's explaining that to people. And I'm glad that he's now, instead of giving to the YouTube, he's now, you know, using his talent to help. Yeah. We, so we have to support him to start being a, a YouTuber the best he can. So oh, help out, am. Mike, because he's always been there for all of us. Now he yeah. wants to have some edited content, watch his stuff. And he got a cute little puppy. Oh, he's so, adorable, the puppy. Yeah. The puppy I heard the adorable. name. He texted me and I'm like, is that because yeah. of this? And he said, well, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, great. this is. So, yeah, the tea cakes, success. We're going to ice them up. I actually want to know about the lemon icing. Where is success all around? This is amazing. I'm, all the recipes worked very well. I was not okay, too guys, worried. Okay, guys, you got to try them all. Look at this. Especially having not done a couple of these recipes before. Um, it worked great. Yeah, this chili is really, it's not. Um, it, has it has that kick. Yeah. Cynthia says, Donna, please tell Doug about Mikey hitting me with his cane. <laughs> and she says that Doug needs to know Mike was mean. Oh, well. so, I can't ever imagine that being true. <laughs> we love you, Mikey. Yeah, Mikey. Yeah, yeah, thank Cynthia. you. Donna, so, I, I, think, I, I think that's it from our kitchen here. Okay, I mean, so I should I come on in? Simple. <laughs> Um, 
We'll do that and show it. I think it will give a little bit more zing because there's subtlety of lemon. Again, lemon is with your palate, but I think yeah. it has enough. Well, but you have to be careful with the extracts too, because if you go overboard, you can't take it back. Exactly. No, exactly. And that's why with doTERRA is so, so highly concentrated. So when you use oils instead of extracts, because mm -hmm. you do lemon extract, it's just like vanilla. You know, you could put a half a teaspoon and you're just getting the extract. But this well, there is I am. oil. Deuterra oils are insane. I did not want to feel like I'm eating dish soap or Lysol cleaner. But mm -hmm. they're a little crunchy on the outside. But if I frost them, they'll probably soften up. Ben, do you want to take a bit? Yeah, pretty one. Come on in. Yeah. Well, that is not, I did not think that was my mouth. Do you I, think the glaze would soften it up a little as absolutely. well? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's probably what it means. Oh, yeah. dear Lord. <laughs> I, I didn't think you did, Mikey. <laughs> I, I need to get a room. <laughs> you you need to be alone you? with oh, your tea cake. Oh, oh, <laughs> good. Yeah, he loves the biscuits. Uh, mm. I knew you'd like them all. Donna, thank you so much for letting us uh, take over your channel today. Oh, my that. goodness. Are you kidding? It, the pleasure was all mine. It, it's just such a treat to do this with you. I've wanted to do this with you for forever. And, you know, let's let's shoot for October maybe for in person. Sounds like a good idea. Hey, if all the uh, planet, moon, stars all line up. All you know, line. That's right. Happen. Who knows? I mean... So, so there's a lot can happen in the world lately. So but as we say on our channel, I'm Arnie. I'm Doug. And I'm Ben. And you've been watching Pepper Tree Villa on this edition of Dinners with Donna. Donna, Donna again, so thank much. you so much. Actually, this was oh my gosh. Fun. I can't thank you stressed. guys enough. You opened up your home and your kitchen and your time. It was amazing. I, I'm so grateful. And I think this was awesome because, like I said, this is pretty much what I would have done. I would have cooked things and done things just like you did. So you guys are like my brothers and um, I'm so grateful to have you in my life. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Donna. Thank you. And we love you so much. wants to I love you guys. message us through all the, the Instabook and the Facegram, <laughs> any yep. one of those, uh, yeah. please do yeah. or try to What's you know, tweet us on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know this day and age, but they're all <laughs> evil to the core, but that's how we communicate. Please, we would love to share stuff with you. Follow Mike, follow Donna, follow Richard. <laughs> He's a wealth of wonderful stuff, even though he killed me with diet, doused me with Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah, I told him it's never gonna, he's not gonna live that down. I and mean, he'd fly all the way across country and it's true. it was cool. It's there was a lot of Diet Coke. So <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Richard. Thank You're you, welcome. Sam. Thank you. Thank you everybody who followed us. Thank you to the subscribers. Thank you who gave Donna some money, you know, super traps. Super 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 I appreciate thank that. You. We call them toothpaste money because we don't make money off of this, but we have fun. <laughs> so this was a fun Sunday. Are we all going? We're all ready? Yep. Everybody, okay. thank you. Yes. And I just, um, I have a few, uh, just a Quick thing to wrap up. Okay. So I'm just going to say that um, in two weeks, I'm not sure if I'm going to go live and cook or if I'm going to have a vlog. I'm going to see how my foot's doing and we'll go from there. And then the second thing I just want to say is that um, July 24th, mark your calendars, everybody. It's a huge day. In addition to being Christmas Eve in July, it's also going to be my birthday fundraiser for Give Kids a World. And we are going to have another marathon live stream where I am going to be making the, all the 50th treats from Disney World's 50th celebration for my 50th birthday. Wow. Oh, wow. Love that. Love that. And it's all going to be the iridescent gold? Yes, of course. It seems like blue. I was watching some of the bloggers and they're like, I would think on the 50th anniversary, there'd be more gold. Mm -hmm. I ate so much blue food. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's blue. Because I just like laugh about the 50th anniversary. It's very blue. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's it's Walt Disney World. So Donna, again, this is gonna yeah. be really this was really fun. I would say that looks fun. I, I honestly cannot yeah. decide which is my favorite recipe of the day. Um they're all good. Yeah. They were all good. I'm very surprised, actually. I'm really surprised. So the the, the definitely is, let's do it again. Cool, really cool. Yeah. I wish That's I was there, but you know. 
Thank you, Donna. Exist. Okay, thank, thank you, Donna. Thanks, Donna. Yes, thank you all for being here and supporting me. I know I've been gone for so long, and this was a perfect return. And <laughs> I'm just so thrilled with all of it. And thank you for everyone who who showed up. Thank you to PTD, and I I will see you guys very soon. Very soon. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow night, Donna. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.